Only a few warriors remain, defenders of humanity against the horrors of the beyond. Their numbers dwindle with every new moon. You see, this world belongs to the darkness, and the darkness will not give it up easily. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Vorpal Tales Grim Dark Chronicles. We are Vorpal Tales, and I am Dwayne at Made of Kimchi, and I will be your GM for this evening. This is our final session of Strange Aeons Season 2, The Thrushmore Terror. Here at Warble Tales, we present a plethora of terrifying tales and awesome adventures for your viewing pleasure. Please seek us out on the internet. Catch us here on Twitch. Consider dropping a follow or a subscription. Check out the archives on our YouTube, and don't forget to hit the bell and like. Visit our webpage, warbletales.com, with links to all of our social media, our Discord, and our Patreon. Check out our calendar to ensure you don't miss any of your favorite shows. And if you're looking to increase your die pool and roll with flair, check out our sponsors, QUEmpire.com, Hit Point Press, and Gem Hammer and Sons. Check out the affiliate link on our webpage and uh, check it out. Shout us tonight, go to Astral Tabletop for the virtual gaming space that we play all of our games in. Thank you to Paizo for the awesome dark campaign setting that we will be finishing this evening. Special thanks to NA Mid for our customer character sheets that you too can use if you use Astral Tabletop. A thank you goes to Love Your Rebellion, a nonprofit group that empowers marginalized groups through the arts. Be sure to check out their website, loveyourrebellion.org. A much love goes to our Patreons. We are so happy that you have tied your soul to ours. And last but not least, thank you to all of our viewers and fans. But now, let us meet our players who will be facing the darkness and obscurity through Thrushmore. Heroes, introduce yourselves. Tell everyone where you can be found and who we will be playing this evening. I am Elder Shackles Online, just realizing something. We didn't level up your character ever. We failed. <sighs> I'm playing Casimir, who is leveled up. So we're going we're gonna to need to level up ever and maybe anyone else who forgot, Duane. I'll be playing oh, no. Casimir, our Sorcerer Rogue, tonight. <laughs> I never my pronouns are they them and tonight I shall be playing the yet to be leveled Luca Divestri Tiefling Half Elf Bard And I am no one and everyone and uh, I will be playing Rai we cannot hear you, John. We can hear you, but you're very far away. Is that better? Yep. Yes. Go, go. And I am John, uh, otherwise known as Rai, and uh, I'll be playing our Oracle for tonight. I am the man with no name, Kisama. You can find me on Twitter, at TrueKisama, and tonight I will be playing Dr. Knackle. Our alchemist. Folks, I'm JT. You can find me online at Zensomancer, and tonight I am playing an army of animals led up by 
Druid Slanfingani. Beautiful. I mean, I'm telling them what to do, but they're played by others as well. <laughs> Well, before we jump in and level up Ever's character, has everybody else leveled up? Including your free extra. I don't remember if... Was this something that we did after stream last week? Because I don't remember. We didn't do it as a group, but we were told to no. do it. <laughs> no, I did not. I um, did not get my free extra, but I believe everything else. Because I do not know what that free extra is. All right, so before we, we do our level up, uh, Ever, if you could present us with our recap for the last session. Yes, indeed. Let me open that document. Uh, yeah. So, turns out I'm an idiot, and I forgot to do it. Well, then I will regale everyone with the last, what happened in the last session. It'll be short and sweet. So pretty much all of you had gone to the fort, Fort Hale Courts, to seek out what was going on in the fort, where everyone had gone, and to find uh, Slon's bear friend, Brandon. You had gone in, bursting through the door by Brandon, had gone through a couple of rooms, fought a couple of undead, a couple of scum, fur creatures. Fry finally arrived <clears throat> as you guys made your way downstairs into the basement initially. You found a woman who you believe to be that same woman that wouldn't let you in initially, stabbing a bunch of scum before teleporting through a wall. You were able to deftly maneuver a giant ooze and recruit a couple of friends who uh, Casimir was able to use his words to woo them to not attack because their friends were just only being used. So you, re you recruited them. Rai was able to save a, a small child, the one, the sister of the small boy that had approached him in the street with a drawn picture, an uncanny likeness. After that, you were able to uh, head upstairs and finish off the rest of the retinue of the cult. Learning a couple of things along the way. Like every time some of these cultists die, the steely just inside town was having an effect. A red flash would go off every time one of them was killed. Then you were hit in the head with telepathic words from the beyond, telling you to come home, face your final missive, if you will. That's pretty much all of it in a nutshell. Yeah, that uh, call to come home. Ugh. It was creepy. I would like to apologize again for being an idiot. I'm sorry. It's um, no biggie. If you want to get like all of it, all you got to do something. is head over to YouTube and catch the uh, <laughs> catch the whole episode. All right, now for level ups. Oh wait, did I say I forgot it? No, I put it on the Patreon. So you got to go sub to the Patreon. Yes, subs. 
subscribe to our Patreon and get all of our get all the stuff. So level ups, you guys should be level uh, five, six, six. Yes, because we're seven at the end of the book. <laughs> Correct. We're going to be level six for one session. Yep. <laughs> we're packing in a lot in this session, so be ready. I do. I'd like to say that I really do enjoy the milestone level up. It's a lot less complicated. And I don't have to do math either. Yeah, it's, it, <laughs> it's, it's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot less. Go farm some rats and more. Let's get to the juicy bits. So the first thing you all should do is change your level on your character sheet to six, because that will automatically calculate your new proficiency bonus on everything. Done. Step two, add hit points, which for everyone except me is eight plus constitution modifier bonus. Does that, are we also going to be healed with that or no? Uh, go ahead and heal yourself to full, regain any spell slots that you might have used because pretty much by the time that you get to uh, Iris Hill, you'll be good to go. Yeah. And then everyone gets one skill feat. One feet from your primary class, and one feet from your archetype class. That's the bonus freebie. So you need to pick three feats. Oh lordy. So how many feats from our bonus archetypes should we have right now? This would be your third or fourth. I can't remember. <laughs> third, I think. It should many, be third. Yeah. yeah, how many do you have? I currently have two, so I'm grabbing a new yeah, feat. Yeah, you, you did it right then. You should have had one at creation... One at one, three. One at level four. And four. one at six, yeah. Four. Okay. Correct. So I'm going to get even weirder. Great. My eyeballs can now fall out of my face at will. It's great. <laughs> at <laughs> that's, will. That's amazing. Or do, you, do they, like... They just melt. They melt out of my head. Stalks? I think it would no, be better if we head. didn't have context and we just left it there and we're like, just imagine what he means. Yeah, no context. Yeah, forget I said anything. It's just poop. His eyeballs come out <laughs> on demand. Um. So, forever, level six bardic feats include. Uh, you are Enigma, so. Assured knowledge, which lets you have a much lower chance of ever failing on a knowledge check of, you know, for skills that you're trained in. Dirge of Doom, which lets you use bardic uh, inspiration uses to terrify enemies. Oh, I apologize. Yours is the Maestro, not the Enigma, so you do not get assured knowledge. You get Harmonize, which lets you do multiple composition spells at the same time. Or Song of Marching, which lowers fatigue penalties for long distance movement. So, I don't foresee us really using that one. It's really going to come down to Harmonize or Dirge of Doom, whichever you think is cooler. Dirge of Doom! Dirge of Doom. I shall link it in to you directly. There you go. And then... The Doom Dirge. You also get... Yeah, what are their archetype? Evers is a uh, dandy. <laughs> uh, so, wait, that was a legit archetype. That wasn't just me describing how I want my character to be perceived. That's correct. You already took distracting uh, flattery, which means your other choice is gossip lore. Wait, no, you took gossip lore. Now you get distracting flattery. Fantastic. I like the sound of this. Which is that. Thank you for the link. And then you need a skill feat. Which, which skills do you have the highest modifier? Probably, uh, uh arc, or occult is one of them. Yeah, switch back over but to But performance is going to be more important for you, I think. Let's see. I've got deception at 14, diplomacy at 14, uh, performance at 14. Yeah, those are my top three. 
looks like you've actually got all the good ones from performance. So let's look at deception. Wait, do you use diplomacy more or deception? I can't remember. Uh, when we were in the asylum, it was diplomacy. But now that Luca knows more about who he was, it's probably going to be more of deception. Okay, so... Confabulator, <laughs> which reduces, <laughs> which reduces people's bonuses to figure out you're lying when you lie a whole bunch in a row. You can keep track of your own lies. Uh, discreet inquiry, which lets you gather information without anyone knowing why you're doing it. Quick disguise. Or I already have some sort of illusory disguise. You have a spell thing that yeah. I can do. Um, debating between being able to lie a whole bunch or finding out things without people realizing why. You also have so rumor, which lets you create rumors whether they're true or not about specific people or subjects. I like that one actually. That's okay. fun. What's that? What's that one called? So rumor. Yep. Oh my god, this is fun. And then you need one spell from the occult list. I had one in mind that oh, we had a we had that list of ones you wanted, but ran out of uh, spaces to get. You had mind reading. Yep. Um, Heroism was the one we didn't pick. The boot, the buff spell. Which is that. Alrighty. Which would complete your level up. Yes. Thank you for the assistance. That was a huge help. You're welcome. JT. And thank you, you for your... your patience, Dwayne. <laughs> so, oh, I got my uh, sixth level, so I have insect form now. Okay. And then and you then can take a free feat from the animal companion beast. thing. Yeah, so uh, all my uh, animals are now mature. So I gotta go look up their new stats. Yeah, that's a big change. John! I don't know about Becky, though. <laughs> yes. Becky, though. <laughs> what do you need? So the free... I, I need to know, like... The free archetype is my oracle archetype? Nope, oracle is your base class. Your archetype is the... Uh, Ghost, ghost hunter. Okay, and that's uh. It's called ghost hunter. Mm -hmm. There's a link to the class. You can take any of the level four feats unless you already have it. Obviously, there's also yours. Also, actually has a level six feat. You can take that too. Ooh. All right, I shall do that. Thank you. Yep. And I assume you're good key. Hey, yeah. Okay. Looks like uh, the only thing I really got to worry about with my animals is that they uh, uh, they get double damage dice now. They get a second damage dice now. Mm -hmm. They get more uh, uh, of everything, too, because their stats go up when yours do. They will get hit points equal to 8 plus their con modifier, and they will get... Uh, proficiency bonus equal to yours, plus whatever their ability modifier is for everything. So their hit hit with attacks goes up then? Yep, it'll be your proficiency modifier plus their strength or dex, depending on what the attack is. Okay. Same for damage. It'll be their, their normal damage plus their strength or whatever. And then... John, you also need one more divine third level spell. I got you. I took a searing light. Nice. I think we're pretty good then, do we? All right. <clears throat> I myself took deeper secrets from my witch patron, Malicious Shadow, Chilling Darkness. And, and I, I figured went, you took some weird stuff. And I went deeper into my 
secondary caster archetype, so now I have all the spell slots and lightning. So, Iris Hill, the resident, or the residence of the aristocratic rulers of her sex, and home to one Count Lowell's, and supposedly once your home. As you leave the fort and make your way towards the uh, the estate, it's pretty easy to recognize as it stands apart from most of the town. As you take the walkway up, some memories start to roll in for for those who lived here. You remember it? You remember coming and going a couple of times. Nothing significant then as you come closer and closer something seems off and you realize that this huge 10 foot tall hedge surrounds the estate and you don't remember that being there. as much as anyone who forgets most of their past would remember But what you are able to remember is that the grounds do hold a various number of buildings that make up the hill itself. They're all built with solid stone blocks. Thick vines of ivy cover the walls. Most of them are sturdy timber frame constructions. And the main house has uh, two main floors, an attic and a basement. However, the specific rooms and locations are still a little foggy. As you continue to move forward, breaking the thick hedge that surrounds this estate is a little squat building that sports a, a pair of heavy doors bearing a small sliding latch or hatch. And thus, I will place everyone here. Try and move everybody around. Uh. Does not like me moving people at all. Fine. I'll move everybody at the same time. So you guys should be able to see this. I actually don't know what you guys see. What do you see? I see everything. Well, you're a cheater. <laughs> I I see, see like nothing. a half circle. I see like a half circle. I see a stone path, a tree, and there's a door. Yes, so that door is is the quote unquote guard house. I didn't put a well, someone just opened it because now I can see what's in the guard house. Great. Well, the people that you see there aren't actually there. That door's that's what something's happening. Yeah, think. something's happening to the map. That door is still closed. Oh, it just closed now. Oh, open. Yeah, I'm getting weird messages popping in and out. <laughs> the map is haunted, Duane. How appropriate. The door is now <laughs> closed. Yes. It's now yes, closed. the door is closed. <laughs> I didn't put a uh, dynamic lighting around the hedge just so you guys can understand the, the vastness uh, of the estate itself. So you come up on this little guardhouse. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. It's weird. What happens if you guys click on your tokens? Uh, I can move mine around. Come clicked. 
I mean, I can actually click on that door. And when I click on I my token, done. all the tokens disappear. <laughs> but I can still see your dynamic lighting lines. That's so weird. Mine don't... None of them disappear for me. Hmm. That's okay. Whilst the map is still being figured out, Casimir <laughs> will actually see what's going on through the gate. Bars, what do we see? So it's like a solid door with a... I mean, you can see that there's a sliding hatch, but it's closed. I'll knock. No one answers. I'll open the door. With the force door if locked. necessary. The door is locked. Uh, Brandon. 32 to pick. Oh, 32 to pick the door. Yes, 32 is enough. Roll me a perception check first. Oh, there it is. Uh, 30. Good enough. It's trapped. Same check. Lockpick, trapping's all the same thing. You are able to disable it. Uh, the full brunt of the trap doesn't go off. However, you still take a little bit of damage. It's not a lot. It's going to be like two. I take none then because I have trap resistance. Oh, even better. There you go. It gives me a minor DR and AC against trap effects. All right. So you are able to open that door. Now I open it for open it for real. What do we see <laughs> inside? Yes, and you see a a boring guardhouse. Uh, a lantern is lit. Uh, it should be daylight, but the lantern's lit nonetheless. A small cot, some weapons, nothing exciting. I don't know. Weapons are pretty exciting. If there are no people in here. I will check it out, and then, assuming no threats, tell the party, let's go. As you rummage around, you see that there, uh, you know, there's like some hard tack, some beef jerky just kind of laying there. It looked like someone left in a hurry. Okay. Going through the other door. Right. I, by the way, I'm not <laughs> not very good with my my token, but I am following with Casimir. I will move you up. It um, allows me to move up. Now the door is closing again. So uh, I'm having Becky go, and at some point she'll come back. You let me know when she comes back and reports what she saw. Oh, so you want her? You want her to fly? Like do a. Do a circle, circle around. Yeah. So as you guys are heading into this guardhouse, Becky takes off, and within the surrounding hedge, the garden of Iris Hill appears kind of like an eerie shrouded thin mist that lingers over the grass. Uh, it seems to be raining just inside the grounds, but not, not a hard rain, kind of a mist, you know, a light misting. All the buildings appear very dark and quiet. You don't see any, she doesn't see any movement around the grounds. If that's the case, I'm going straight to the house. If there appears to be no movement, lights, or activity, I don't see a reason to check every single building when our goal is probably in the big manor, unless the party disagrees. You haven't led us astray yet too much. I shall follow you wherever you may go because you are the only one I remember for as long as I do. For as long as I have. I hate this mist. It's going to make my hair poof. <laughs> um, the, the main house is directly yeah, uh, west. 
Move me to whichever door looks like the main entrance. Yes, it's directly west from the... Uh, where is the main door? The main door is over yonder. Ha, huh. okay. The door right in front of Casimir. I'm gonna knock on the door. Uh, you hear movement and a little bit of light coming out of the windows as apparent by the cuts in the wall that I gave for you guys. <laughs> um, nobody answered. I hope the servants were better trained when we lived here. How very rude. Indeed. Can open that door too, unless oh, it's trapped like or this. locked. This is what we call suspect. All right, inside the house is rather dark, given it's still bright outside. Um, and kind of what you're entering in the from the main door is a, a long hall clad with uh, fine wood paneling not paneling but you know wood that's paneled uh, and it looks like an oversized curio cabinet from the from the whittling that it has been done there's hundreds of items and art objects on display small tables uh, and on some of the benches dozens of paintings tapestries whatnots uh, to the north uh, there is another door at the end of the hall and to the south there is another door at the end of the hall left is never right so I'm going east. Left is never right, but sometimes right is wrong. So you're going what about people in the left? Like, what about people left-handed? They're always in their right mind. Not sure about Are that we? one. Are Just because you're left-handed doesn't mean you go left. So you're heading to the northern door? And I must say, left-handed people are awesome. Damn straight. Yeah. Most presidents are left-handed, in case you didn't know. Weird fact. Interesting fact. So, yes, or my token is, is the direction I was planning to head. All right. So you come across this door. Uh, again, this door is not locked. It doesn't seem like they were really caring about locking doors. So my numbers are, because we know we set them for the dungeon, is 28 stealth, 30 perception, 32 locks and traps. All right. You should be good for most of them. I'll double, I'll double check as we go, but I'm pretty sure right. you should be good. Yeah. I'm going through this door, unless I notice or hear anything sus. Uh, you do hear some chatting. Nothing loud. Uh, talking about uh, strange happenings in the attic. Uh, why don't these why don't these thugs speak common? Luca. And just general chatter. Why don't you introduce us? And I throw the door open and push Luca through. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Right, so uh, you yeah, you open the door on a what looks to be a uh, a nice dining room, big table, eight chairs, some cupboards. The smell of smoke starts to billow out from the uh, the fireplace. Lots of dirty dishes, empty wine bottles all over the place, and three cultists sitting down having a meal. Uh, hello, how are you? You wouldn't by any chance have. At least one full bottle of wine left. I pour myself a drink. They all—they're like, "How did you get here?" 
Uh, we walked. I drink the drink while I stare at one of them. I'm gonna have. I want uh, Brandon. Oh. I lost. I lost Brandon's token on my animal tokens. I gotta go back and find them. But I want Brandon to sort of start pacing around the edge of the room with Bradford at my side. Oh yeah, that's something we should remember. Your animals matured. That means Brandon is is large size now. Oh jeez. I don't know if he is able full to get bear in that hallway. <laughs> he could squeeze with Pathfinder rules, but he'd make a hell of a mess. <laughs> that also means your wolf is now medium instead of small. I think we already made the token medium though. All right, so there's Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe don't pace around the edge. Maybe just pace back and forth in the corner. <laughs> it's going to knock the table over trying to circle the room. <laughs> Waiting for Luca so, to keep keep with the pleasantries. Yeah, Brandon comes in, and you visibly see these cultists start to get on edge. Hands start to go inside of cloaks. I, I wouldn't, wouldn't do that, do if, that I were if, you. if I were you. Oh, gentlemen, such a mistake. One of the guys oh, that put so his hand in his jinx. cloak, I take something off his plate and eat it while I stare him down. I'll take. I'll. I'll <laughs> I, I just got my scythe as a walking stick, so I'll just pull it like halfway down, and I'm just gonna run my thumb from the from the base of the base of it all the way to the point, and just watch him. We'll just keep doing that. Now, now, uh, before you start anything, I should like to inform you, delightful, question mark, people that, uh, we are here on invite. Oh? Who invited you? This is our Why? house. We lived here. Well, we live here now, so get out. Ah, I, I do have something I wish to show you. Uh, that will prove the true owners of the house. Oh, that. Are you pointing at the ceiling? I don't know what that means. Uh, my, my, yeah. such poor manners. I think we all should be a bit more civilized and we'll go to roll to intimidate. All right. Roll if to I intimidate. Can, This whole time, Dr. Knackle's been lurking in the doorway in case anyone tries to leave the room. Dr. Knackle's, make a perception check. Oh. Oh. No more. I, I would like to do this against all three of them. Because this is the thing I do well. Or, well, I can do against all three of them. Ho-ho. Oh. What'd I get? I didn't even look. Oh, whoop, 31. Dude. They are... Not visibly shaking in their boots, but they are contemplating their life choices. <laughs> I don't see any reason why we can't all walk out of here. But, if I may, some questions first. I don't want to ask you any questions. Oh, no, that's fine. I think... Uh... My party and I have some questions for you, if you'd indulge us. Which one said... Uh, this is, we live here now, get out. Uh, the one that's uh, number three. Okay. He is the... So the one I'm next to. Okay. Most defiant of the group. <laughs> the one I'm eating his food off his plate. Yeah. I say, <laughs> excuse me? I must have misheard what you said. I said... I don't want to ask. And then you I any put questions. my knife in his throat and tear a hole through his jugular in the middle of his sentence. Sorry, what now? The other two just kind of look at each other, not really knowing what just happened. Now, now, see, you've done upset my friend here. He's not actually hard of hearing, you understand. I drink the blood in front of the other two. I, I assume that you, you left the knife there and just put a glass underneath the jugular. 
Yes, I do it with, with dignity. But no, I didn't leave the knife there. I push it in, pull out the side. It's messy. Oh. I am and filling like a glass, but it's it. it's probably it's not on me across the table, hopefully hitting one of them. Yeah, I was going to figure it probably sprays out to the side, <laughs> hitting number five in the face. And then I drink from we'll the glass. See. I thought you were going to have it spray on Luca, and I was like, of course. I thought no, about I'm it, but that, that's that's against what I'm trying to do here. I'd like to daze one of them. Uh, oh. This is going to be pretty easy. They're fairly dazed as it is. Oh, maybe I should not bother. Maybe I should just... And then number two uh -oh. is like, what, what, do you, what, do you, what do you want? To know everything about this house, why you're here, and what you're doing. We're here because and then you can scamper along. Our mistress wants us here. Why? Be because we need the power. For what? For... For Haster. To what goal? To appease him. By doing what? By powering the Steely. Why would that appease a god? I have mythos knowledge, so I actually know who they're talking about. <laughs> the mistress is trying to gain favor with him. What does she want? What is her ambition? She doesn't tell us much. Where is she? Probably near the Steely. Excellent. And then I leap across the table. Oh. Kill the one that's not talking to me. Look at the other one and say, run along. Tell all your friends this is our house. Get out and live. All right, uh, yeah, so two and three are dead. Five runs out the door. Into Dr. Knackle. Uh, there's another door. <laughs> oh, the other door. Okay. The, the other, door. other door. <laughs> <laughs> I right. was hoping they'd run physically into Dr. Knackle and <laughs> it would make this sort of squish sound like when you throw a sticky hand against the wall. Yeah, and get stuck. <laughs> Dr. Knackle, though. Didn't do too well on his perception check. Nice and didn't, re didn't realize the pitter patters of feet coming down the hallway. He'll be fine. He's got a sticky back. <laughs> oh, where are you at? Why? Why did I not put this? What was the, the what was the CR of the cultists? CR of the cult of the cultists? Yeah, I get temporary hit points for the blood drinking. It's not just intimidation. Oh, three. Thank you. Ah, there it is. Doctor Knackle, what's your AC? My AC right now, at this moment, is 23. It's always you getting hit, too. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. I can soak the damage. So as as this is going on, with your moisture, all of a sudden, you feel a like teeth sink into your leg. Well, maybe we'll have to see. Uh, 27 to hit. Yeah, that hits. Yeah, so you feel excruciating pain in your, oh my god. In your lip. Oh my god. <laughs> what is this? Uh, take 26 piercing damage. <laughs> what? Holy shit. <laughs> as, as your I think leg... you meant to say they eat his leg entirely. As your leg pretty much like you feel it kind of like catch on fire from the pain and as you turn around to see what it is you see this huge like otherworldly dog looking thing 
Uh, if anybody makes an, a roll, uh, an occult roll, you could probably tell what it is. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I gotta get to my character sheet. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I'll declare mine after you declare yours. Declare your face. Sorry. It's beautiful. I'm an adult. <laughs> <laughs> it is a work of art, I declare. Boo, only a 15. 24. You know this to be a hound of Tindalos. A hound from the other side. Mythos knowledge check, how to banish. Natural 20. Uh, 32. There's no specific way to banish it, but it doesn't like curved spaces. Huh. I.e. if it's not standing next to a 90 degree structure, it is weakened. Okay. <laughs> That is a really weird weakness. I know. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> I drop a wall of water around it, them, and us in a, in a sphere. The wall of water is kind of a useless wall, except in situations like this where I can make it a shape. Awesome. And then I kind of hope Dr. Knackle stabs it, I suppose. <laughs> Stabbing time. Yes, I'm not going to have you guys roll initiative for this. We're going to play it free form. Stabbing time, stabbing time. But you'll know it's stabbing time. Goodness me. That was a lot of damage. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, Dr. Knackle first rages and then turns around and stabs with his fancy dagger. Does a 27 hit? 27 does hit. So that has a total of 8 piercing damage. Because of my fancy new barbarian feats, I heal a little bit of health because I raged. I apologize. Pillar of water, not wall. Eh, same difference. And that does mean they're floating around in it, but Knackles isn't. <laughs> they have to do a thing to walk out of it. But they can. Alright. Because it is a round, curved curved things it is significantly weaker than it was before in order to walk along the bottom it has to make a DC 10 swim check and it's assumed to be difficult terrain and then when it exits it actually falls out <laughs> cool to see the one it's their turn uh, I'm going to allow everyone to go, since it is kind of thrown off balance. And then we will roll initiative, if need be. John, go. Um, all right, let me take a look here. Let me get a little bit closer. Just don't go in the pillar, you'll be swimming too. That's right. So I'm gonna get five. I'm gonna take five feet right here. I can see Doctor Knackle. I can't see whatever's tearing into him, right? Uh, I mean, if you it's can, visible. If you can see it on the map, then you can see it. Yeah, okay. it's just, it's in water, but the water isn't like opaque. Your problem's going to be, there's nowhere to stand. You'd have to force your way through Knackles and into the water, so ranged attacks are probably the order of the day. Or swim. Alright, so this is my...
This is where I can get with one movement. Uh, 5, 10, 15, 20. I think I'm going to do... How wide is the pillar? Oh. That, would, that would be for... Kazmir, how, how wide is the pillar? Oh, I was muted, sorry. Uh, because of the way I angled it so that Dr. Knuckles isn't in it, <laughs> it's actually going to be the square the hound is in, the two to the left of it, and the six below it. <laughs> it's in the upper right quadrant. Okay. Oh, wait, no. Fifteen. So that's a two square burst from the center. So it's going so all the way down to the bear rug. Whoa. Yeah. Which means... If you, I don't know where you're at, John. Here you are. You can go. W w if you were in the room with us, you'd have to go through the water, or you'd have to do a range attack. I was here. Okay, I, I see more clearly now. Um, can I see it from here? Can you? Like from where I'm standing right now? I mean, e yes. Then yes. Okay. okay. Alrighty, I'm just going to do a harm spell on it. From here. All right. Uh, and then at second, two actions. So that's one d eight plus eight. Uh, the blue should actually be just shy of the bear rug, doing not covering it. Yeah. So uh, that's for, going yeah. to be. Um. 13 points. No save or anything? Uh, there is a fortitude save. I got a 20. Uh, and it seems to be good. Yeah, or no. No, my spell DC is 22, so it fails. Okay. Um, so it's going to take 13 damage. And I'm going to B spell my compound longbow. I think, and I'm gonna take a shot with that. This is a 29 hit. Uh, minus 5, 24 does not. So is it my? It's minus 5. That's your second attack. I didn't think it worked that way. Because I was casting a spell. Oh, there. Well, it does hit, right? No. Oh, it doesn't. 24 does not hit. Okay. That's my turn. Alright, who's gonna go next? Looking... I can't find Wild Shape's actual... I'm looking for that because I want to actually turn into something right now. It's a spell. What is it you want to turn into? Um, whatever I'm allowed to, like a shark or something, I'm going to dive into the water and turn into a shark and bite this thing. Hey, proof. I don't know if you can yet. Let's check. That would be really cool, though. But I can't. I'm in the spell list. I, I don't see it on the spell list. You can. Ape, bear, bull, canine, cat, deer, frog, shark is in the list. Say what type of shark? There's flat stats. It's not specific type of shark. Oh, okay. It's I don't know. Where, can you link me wherever you're showing this? Because I can't find it. Yeah, it's a spell. That's why it's not a feat. The feat just gives you access to the spell. Okay. It's a focus spell. Oh, I was on a completely different website. <laughs> uh, you would heighten right. it. You would heighten it to third level, meaning your attack modifier is plus fourteen, and the damage is two d eight plus five. Yeah. So attack modifier is fourteen. So let's do that. And it costs you a focus point to use the power. I think you should have two at this stage. Yeah. So I rolled an eighteen plus fourteen is probably hits. 32 will hit. Yep. Math in my head. 
Um, 2d8 plus and five. Then 2d8 plus five. 15. All right. You also have an AC of 23 in this form and 10 temporary hit points. And a swim speed of 35. Um, I don't feel like my animals can do much because they probably yeah. can do much in the water, so we'll just move on. Wise. Luca. Luca or Sometimes. Casimir. Yeah, I'll, uh... What do we have left? Just this hound in a pillar huh? of water. Or in a sea of water that goes down the hallway. Oh. Maybe I should just leave it there. I mean... I highly doubt that... <laughs> It's going to be able to get out. No, but yeah, you should and... try to kill it. But there's oh, wine on the table. There is wine on the table. Oh no, it'll spill the wine. It'll spill oh. the wine. <laughs> yeah. I'm looking and seeing what I would like to do. Because I don't want to waste my spells on like this small battle. But I don't know if this would be that small if you can't hit it with a 24 because that would hit all of us. Oh, oh, okay. That's 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 fair. Um, Insult it quickly. It's also taken Insult like 60 damage and it's not dead, so it's definitely not a cultist level CR. Oh, well, let's... It's, it's, uh, about, it's about half dead. Let, let's go to Blistering Invective, one of my second level spells. Mm. So... It has to understand your language for that to work. Actually, actually, if the target doesn't understand the language or you're not speaking a language, it gains a plus four circumstance bonus. Well, I mean, oh. it has to understand language. It's a dog. Uh, it it does understand language. Oh, okay. It understands a language. <sighs> so, it, okay. Oh, it probably only understands infernal. <laughs> uh, n no. It's, uh, it's going to be like Aklo or one of yep, the deep one it languages. is Aklo. It do is Aklo. I don't have that, do I? And Casimir, you would know that based on the occult role that you had earlier. I'll translate the insult. Go ahead and say it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, can you do that? I don't know. Can we cast cast it anyways. <laughs> It's taking a penalty, so you, you, the bonus it gets is probably offset by the penalty. It's worth doing. Okay. Okay. It, it does a saving throw of will, by the way. So. An 11. 27. This bugger. So is that a failure or a critical failure? That's his regular success for it. It's, there make, it's making the, see, the save. It succeeded on making the save. Which means the target takes oh. half the persistent fire damage, but full base damage. Oh, der, I'm sorry. I was calling mine a failure or critical failure, not it's... Okay, so yes. Uh, it, still, it still does things with half oh, those the fire damage. Yeah, so it still does the 11 least. fire damage ever rolled. So I need and, 2d6. Yep. I, I'm not normally this dumb, I swear. I have had a very long day. And then it'll take half of whatever ever rolls. So, persistent. Ever, yep. Please, please roll well, my little pretties. You're sparkly. Make me happy. I think you're precious. Oh, seven. It's a four. Seven now, be... and then four every turn, yep. Yep, four now, and then four every turn. No, it takes full in the first turn. Wait. It only takes oh, half it... a persistent on a save. It... Mm -mm. Oh, yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, that's how that wording goes. Do you want me to copy and paste it to Discord? No, just... So, so it doesn't... It takes it full doesn't damage take... now. It takes seven now. And then every turn on its turn, it'll take four until you stop and put it out. Right. Yeah, that's what I... Okay. Well, it's underwater, so... I already, I already made it take the uh, the four damage earlier. Eh. And then I need it to make a reflex save. Uh, and it is at a negative for because of the water, correct? Yeah. It, well, in order to move it all, it first has to make a basic swim check DC 10. Don Arnetto has an excellent question in the Twitch chat. Uh, can you cast a light spell on a conjured column of water? No, uh, you, once have conjured... to, you have to target a solid object with the light spell. Um. Um, he did not make his movement check. I cast this one specifically, which is, uh, what's it called? It's got a weird name. Sudden Bolt. A bolt of lightning comes out of the ceiling and hits it because I get to roll your favorite die. That's D12s. Hey. Yeah, right? I get to roll a lot of them, too. 41 lightning damage, and it failed its save. So, can I get a DM? Um, it's now, here's, here's the question, and be honest. Does the lightning affect the water? It doesn't have any... It doesn't say anything about that either way in the spell. Okay. Just making can, sure. I don't, I don't want slime to be electrified. So this thing goes out once this elect once this lightning hits it. It fries and becomes uh, pulpish masses that kind of float and bob in this tubular water slide. Uh, everyone within 15 feet... Make a fortitude save. Yeah. Can, can you make me do that, Tom? Are you within 15 feet? feet? I got a 21. 5, 10, 15, 20. Nope. Oh, boy. Hey. I rolled Pretty a good. 16. Dr. Knackle got a 30. Uh, Luca, you're well out of range. Casimir, Brandon's okay. Uh, Rye, you're all right. So pretty much just Bradford, Dr. Knackle, and Slon. Oh, let me roll for Bradford. Oh. If it's about, like, getting sick seeing the floating viscera... I, I was gonna say Luca totally, totally would. Uh, if you if you want to do this, then then I can have you have you do it if you if you really want. Me? Not in particular. <laughs> So, Dr. Knackle, you had a 30. Dr. Knackle got a 30. Salon, what did you have again? I had a 21, and Bradford had a 28. Okay. So, all of you, uh, as as the lightning hits it and envelops the body of this, this hound, uh, its eyes kind of flash. And for that split second, you feel that pain that it felt, but on a much lower level. And then all over your body, tiny bloodless little wounds start to rip open in all different parts of your, on your arms and on your feet. You can feel them inside your boot. It's like a million paper cuts. So you're saying for Knackles, it's just Tuesday. Right. All of Dr. Knackles' wounds begin to squee. That, might, that <laughs> description might be the worst thing that I have ever heard on this channel. Um, now I'm gonna roll the now I'm gonna roll the damage and this is gonna be fun. Doctor Knackle then proceeds to explode. Oh, that was that was crap. Okay, so Doctor Nickel, Doctor Knackle, and Bradford 
take eight slashing. Salon, you take 17. Are you actually going to explode? Because that'd be Not amazing. Alright. Sounds like we're going to need to do some surgeries after this, huh? <laughs> Sounds like Rai should do a burst heal, maybe. Level uh, one, I, level one full round. I, I can't participate in that, guys. I can't. I'm superstitious now. It's part of my have, barbarianism. I don't, I don't have heal. What he doesn't he, have heal. What, huh? what if he doesn't tell you? Or what if Casimir doesn't say anything and does it? Because I do. You can resist. It's a fortitude saving throw. I burst. And there's a whole away. thing about if I travel with people who insist on casting spells on me, it's the same thing. It's just. I'll just do surgery. I'll just... It's fine. Oh, I'm still burst healing whether you participate oh. or not. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll be in the corner. Healing. You guys have fun. 16 healing to everyone who wants to be in the burst. So other than the, than the door that leads out of the kitchen and then the way that you came... There is a set of stairs going up. Water's still there. I, I'm gonna like swim out. If it is, I'm gonna swim out and transform back. Doctor Knuckles, are you going to? I don't know. So those shut before we continue. Hey. While he says this, they're all squeeing very quietly. Uh, they'll seal themselves up. It's fine. I go up the stairs. He said he's fine. Or they might begin to grow teeth. Who knows? Alright, so you guys are gonna go upstairs. Teeth. Oh my god. So many PCs. Ugh, it won't let me move anything. There we go. <laughs> All right, so you head up the stairs, and as you come to the top of the stairs, I have like eighty thousand different apps I got to go through. <laughs> uh, you come to what you believe to be the, the a sitting room, large fireplace, round table. Nice high back stuffed chairs. Uh, it looks like somebody has gone through here and just started throwing books all over the place as if they were looking for something. The windows are shuttered. There's a nice soft candle glowing in the corner. A door to your west. That music was really, like, intense. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, we're in the sitting room! <sighs> There's books, you say? Yes. I tire of these cultists and their games. And then I cast Press Digitation to make as loud a noise as possible. Advertising our presence. Uh... So as soon as you do that, this loud boom goes off and echoes through the room because the door is shut. But all of you can easily hear, and more so Becky just goes, rats! Because you hear skittering just running away from the boom. Yeah, I probably just ch chased away a swarm. <laughs> Remind me to call you for pest control, my dear friend. Yeah. I just vampire smile at you. But then I grab my staff and I hit the ground and do the boom a few more times heading towards that west door. C could you make it sound like a gong? At least once, please? I arch an eyebrow at you, and then I make it gong and smile. Yes. And then ah, I make it you. squee like Dr. Knackle's wounds. <laughs> <laughs> 
just really, really loud. Wounds then squee louder in return, feeling threatened. <laughs> Dr. Knuckles goes to the corner, sits down, and starts Knackles. trying to seal them up with his hands. <laughs> Now it's a problem. Uh, Before it was fine. We could go back to the uh, first room and grab the corks from the wine bottles and shove them <laughs> in there. Mm. That's not uh, a bad idea. <laughs> you need to invent duct tape for yourself. So the more I banging you make, the, uh, the more skittering you hear, and you even start to hear them like in the walls. keep doing that as we head deeper in assuming it's chasing them away it's the loudest walking stick of all time all right also I no assume... one, also i like how no one questioned how i suddenly got a walking stick out of nowhere From, in the can... party i mean we're just Luca like knows not to ask yeah you, you always, just do you always had it it's fine Yeah, so where will you going go west. Now? Going west? All right. Can you, can you yell out, we shall pass, as you hit the stick on the ground? <laughs> <laughs> so the, just beyond the door opens up into uh, what kind of mirrors the main corridor on the first floor. Uh, it is much smaller, uh, but it follows that same flow. A couple of doors that lead to what looks like to be different rooms. Uh on the western side of the hallway. And then a, a door at the far end. One door on the east side of the hallway. One moment. The way he says that, I'd think he was up to something. When is he not up to something, I wonder? Ah, this is quite true. When is anyone not up to something? Is that level one? That is level one. I'm going to cast Unseen Servant. That is mm. a good question. I'm going to have it move about. And see where the people are, and then come back and tell us. <laughs> can it, it? Does it actually open doors, or can it pass through doors? It would actually open them, but it would just be like the door would open to an empty hallway because I'm staying in the room while I do it. I could tell it to make it seem like the breeze, you know, like it swings open and then swings right back shut. You could detect so magic it though if you were a caster. So, Salon, for the slightest second, the door opens next to you and then closes, and you're like, what? <laughs> and then further down the hallway, uh, the door further south of Dr. Knackle, it opens. You hear you hear someone go, huh! and a cultist jumps out as he goes to, like, stab through the air and <laughs> miss. And then the door shuts. And now this cultist is just in the middle of the in the middle of the hall, <laughs> flat on his stomach. He's kind of like, uh, uh. Doctor Knackles charges starts the to Dr. walk over. Wait, why was Doctor Knackles in the hallway? <laughs> it's where he put his character. <laughs> just standing there. I was curious. He, he, he's, he's bad. Going, he's bad ah! at. You're bad at stealth, Knackles. Luca he runs at is... you with a dagger. <laughs> Luca is laughing his ass off in the book room. I don't, I don't, like, they, I wouldn't even be paying attention because their job is to open all the doors, shut them, and report back, so I'm just waiting for it to come back. And, like, right in the dirt or something. Yeah. As, as the, uh, cultist comes up and tries to stab Dr. Knackle in the throat, once I find my cultist guy... In order no for him to do that, he'll have to find where my throat is. It's no easy <laughs> task. I haven't seen it in three years. <laughs> I don't even know where it is. 
this is my kidney. <laughs> no idea where that went. Please tell me there has to be some sort of like will save or fortitude or constitution to try and find Dr. Nichols' throat. I doubt he's, he probably won't find it. These are one of the goober cultists. <laughs> goober cultists. Uh, does a 19 hit you? It does not. Yeah. Uh, so Dr. Nackle takes... Yeah, so just, just as that, that swing comes through with the dagger, you see another door open further down <laughs> oh. and then close. <laughs> and then the door on the on the what is your left hand side opens and you just hear somebody go huh and then it closes <laughs> and then the door at the far end of the hall opens <laughs> and then closes <laughs> you, for, you forgot the right? and then your unseen servant and then it would just kind of push past knuckles so he's getting knocked against the wall by nothing yeah kind of it's still past physical his, pushes past you two you the cultist kind of moves over like, what was that? <laughs> so confused why he couldn't find your throat and why he's getting pushed. And then uh, strategically in different books, the Unseen Servant will write out, uh, first door smells funny, no people. Second door, goober cultist times two. <laughs> Third door. Nothing. Looks like a bed. Fourth door. Woman. Nice bed. Fourth door. Stairs. I tell everyone, we're going to the one with the woman with the nice bed, because that's clearly who's in charge. Then I come out in the hallway, and I stop, and I go, Knuckles, what the fuck? Kill it. Yeah, go He's ahead, like Nichols. in mid stab, got him like wrapped <laughs> around. Quit playing with your mm. food, Knuckle. Yes. Stab, we have stab, places stab. to be. Which one of you named yourselves Goobers? Incredibly silly. I'm ignoring all the rooms except the one with the nice bed. I, I For now. May, may I be let into the room? Mm -hmm. Huh? I, I am oh, outside. You're not the in there, are you? Oh, did I not put you? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> he is now. Thank you. I was moving my guy, so I grabbed him. <laughs> so, explain to me, Dr. Knuckle. I'm seeing some things pop up. Yeah. These are Dr. Knuckle's stabs. Just thought I'd get them out of the way right now. What? Is, what is that first one? 15. Does a 15 hit? I don't know. What's the name of it? Main Gouch. It's a type <laughs> of dagger. Main okay. Gouch. Main yeah, Gouch. Like, it's your main Gouch. What? Uh, your main Gouch does not hit. Would a you know, you know like the handbag, Gucci. Would a 17 hit? 17 does hit. Oh, lovely. Would be 9 piercing damage. And I assume a another 15 does not hit. A 15 does not hit. Yeah, so Dr. Knackle is just over here stabbing the cultist for a solid 12 seconds or so. <laughs> As the cultist is screaming, he's just like, why won't you die? And he gets stabbed. You hear a scream. And then at that point, the door opens. And the another cultist runs out, opens another door goes in and closes it. What do we want to do with that one? I assume he is not under the moniker Goober. I, uh, I walk up sighing heavily. I look at Knuckles and I'm like, like this. And I roll a 27 to hit for 15 damage to the throat. <laughs> That's my uh, saber tooth dies. blade. I don't <laughs> even look at the cultist. I'm just looking at Knuckles. Observe. Yank. Saw. Pull. Yeah. <laughs> and this time, yes, some blood does splatter on Luca. <laughs> That's a far splatter. But I like it. <laughs> he just, like, prestidigitized the blood somewhere. That's you, that's you how know, that got there. You know how you see in the samurai movies when 
They always have to flick off their sword to clean it. Just... I look you right in the eyes, Knackle, while I'm put my finger in his throat and then suck the blood off of it. The only immortal in this room is me. Dr. Knackle mutters, and we'll see about that. <laughs> starts giggling. <laughs> what does Mini Knackles do? Mini Knackles. Has he been absorbed? He's been car? absorbed for now. Oh. <laughs> Mini Knackles is no longer with us. He keeps peeking out of each of the different holes. <laughs> it's like... He's the one squeeing <laughs> that won't go away. Just this... consistently. You'll see Dr. Knackle just you'll hear a <laughs> come from him and then he'll go. So he's the, where, he's the where's Waldo and you hear a man <laughs> say understood and then another cultist comes running down the hallway just crazy again ah Dr. Knackles another knife comes at your probably missed throat ah that one might have hit while, the, Na while Knackles is trying to stab the cultists I look over at Slon and say I recommend the same tactic as last time Walk up to the door and fireball the room. I, Does a I 22 had... hit you, Dr. Knackle? 22 does not hit me, so... I yeah. had thought you were going to suggest Slan to turn into a shark and toss him in the room, but I was mistaken. Maybe turn Knackles into a shark. His hands aren't no good at stabbing. We're all just like right there behind like you, just staff. like not just like watching, waiting for you to do something. We're just having a conversation, <laughs> he's, he's trying desperately to kill this. Like cultist. like parents at a playground with their kids. Just... <laughs> can I, can oh, I... oh look, he's trying so hard. It's adorable. Oh god. Uh. <laughs> yeah. So you have this cultist trying to stab at you again. Can I take off his head? I'd like to take off his head. I will well, let you pass. A... Sure. That is a critical failure, I'm pretty sure. Dr. Knackles stabs himself <laughs> in a roundabout twist of fate. You you actually go to stab yourself, but one of your cuts grabs it with its teeth. <laughs> and when you try to come back and pull it off, you drop it. Ray, is, will you please handle dagger. this? <laughs> that, is a, that is a 20. A 20 will hit. Dr. So, Knackle just picks up his so dagger I, and walks I, away. I, I, I grab my, si <laughs> I grab my scythe as the as the occultist is trying to go for Knackles. Just kind of uh, just put it between the cultist's neck and Knackle and pull. Alright. Takes the eight slashing, but he's still up. Oh, you are a stubborn one. They're immortal! Told you. Well, scary man, I will fireball as you ask. Well, but don't come running to me when we all uh, die in a burning uh, house fire. Not, not in the hallway, in that big bedroom. <laughs> no, no, I know, just, okay. I know. Yes, uh, in the hallway. Right in the hallway. <laughs> I mean, I've I've asked them to do stranger things. <laughs> so, great show, by the way. Everyone, go watch. I do another fourteen damage to him with my saber tooth knife that I have ensorcelled. And again, that one goes I down. sigh and I'm like, like this, Ray. And I cut its throat too. Why is it so hard for you people to hit the jugular? Uh, hey man, they helped out first. They, just, they loosened the top. Yeah, yeah they, they put the, the knife in his you. thigh. How did that help? To be fair, <laughs> you're the only one who eats in that area, so you are always on the lookout for it. So aim for where you eat. I guess it means aim for their shanks. <laughs> <laughs> aim for the shanks. That... I... Mm. <laughs> yes, it is a tad inconvenient. Slan, if you would, please. <laughs> All right, I'm walking up to the where the lady is, right? Yeah, basically or try to be a little ninja about it. Just be like, peek in the room, fireball. Which, it's the which, quietest fireball of the world. Which ball. one? Which one is she in? Did we determine? Did the thing say she's in? Bottom the one right. Yeah. Yeah, on the right. 
Did I do good good sound effects for you? Gonna step in and fireball. There doesn't appear to be anyone here to fireball. <laughs> That's a reflex safe. If there's no one in there, if the bad guy left, that's okay. You set off all the traps. It's a boss room. There's something in there. Is that a reflex save? Yeah. Why aren't these not in alphabetical order? That's 66 damage, JT. You'd roll no matter what. Ah, there it is. What is the radius of the fireball? Uh, 20. JT, you got a boost on your next attack from Tony Carlstrom. Awesome, thank you, Tony. So can you add another dice of fireball? I mean that sounds sounds right up the alley. I mean I don't know, can I GM? No. <laughs> no, that's for your attack. So you fireball this room. As soon as it hits in the middle of the room, the bed goes up. All the papers in the room immediately disintegrate. The nice uh, satin bed sheets go up in flames. Uh, you see a bunch of rats run out from underneath the bed, all on fire, <laughs> running around, screaming for their lives. There was a giant swarm of rats underneath that bed that had run to hide from the loud noise. See? Always fireball. Uh, and then you see, as, as the room is, is kind of going up, you see something move very quickly right towards you, Slon. And it, it runs into you. It's on fire. <laughs> and it kind of pushes past you. It knocks you over. And you don't take any damage or anything. It just kind of knocks you over. And you fall down on your butt in the middle of the hallway. And the rest of you see it at that point too and it's just a pair of legs that start running down the hallway on fire and they run into the the door just past dr knackle once they hit the door they fall over and they kick a little bit i mean that is my favorite part but i also like the upper part that's kind of amazing so you're saying you're a lower half go, type person i'm gonna go check the burning legs indeed these legs, or are these just pants? pants? No, these are legs. Are they just pants? Like someone's wrapped in an invisibility cloak, but didn't get all the way down. <laughs> Your invisibility cloak shrunk in the wash. <laughs> uh, you can roll investigation if you wish. Uh, anyone who wants to investigate the legs. Investigation time. I assume you mean perception. Yeah. So, oh, 27. I will percept the legs. Ah, the legs are made of legs. <laughs> yes, uh, yes, the legs, yes, the legs are, are made of, of yes, legs. they are la made of leg material. <laughs> 26. Oh my gosh. That was such a terrible roll. Uh, it is my opinion that these legs are made of legs. Thank you. I am a doctor. Uh, Dr. Nacho, <laughs> I need you to make a... Shoved it. <laughs> Sausage. I need you to make a medicine roll. Oh. Okay. Seems <laughs> these legs are dead. <laughs> All right. That is a 23. <laughs> All right, so for the perception rolls, everybody pretty much sees that they are legs. Uh, they, yes, they, they are legs. They are real legs. Um, they're burnt. Uh, you see very bad burns on the actual skin. It looked like these legs were at one point wearing a dress. <laughs> Raising, I love okay. it. Okay. Um, and, and that is evident by the top of the dress 
kind of laying underneath the legs as it fell and hit the ground. I mean... Um, just based off of the you know, what you can see, you can tell that these are a pair of females' legs. Female human. I go looking for the other bits in the burned room. Uh, Dr. Knackle, when you look at the legs, you're like, wait a second. Where's the rest of it? And then as you look at the like the burnt parts of the, the actual torso area, uh, there's no like cuts or anything. Like it looks like Smoke. someone just just took it apart. Almost like someone was made of play doh or ooze, perhaps. So again, it's just Tuesday for knuckles. It's just Tuesday, yeah. Did this last week. Uka will follow Casimir into the room, and as he passes the legs, bows your royal thighness and walk away. <laughs> uh, a lot of smoke. <laughs> it's really the highest of compliments. Cinders burning out of this room. Do, do we want to make a moment and put out the fire we just started? Fireball doesn't work that way unless Dwayne wants it to. No, no, I mean just like little cinders, like, you know, paper's still on fire. But I will check those other, what I assume are closets, because I don't know better. Oh, inside the room? Yeah, starting with the one in the middle of the room, then moving to the farthest. The one in the middle of the room is locked, but you are able to roll, or your lockpick is able to open it. And inside there, you find a little study. This I'll check out. Numerous books. Uh, all nice labeled. This looks to be like it was Lowell's. From, from what you have learned about Lowell's from your time in the asylum, like this is where he did his studying, all of his occult studying. There are a number, number of books. Um, make me, actually with your role, you don't even have to. So, of some things of note that you do find uh, on the table itself is a notebook that holds an account of Lau's interviews with Oliver Zandalus, the guy that you killed in the asylum. And it's funny because although Zandalus was mute, Lau's would, you know, it talks about how he would interview him and allowed him to draw, use his uses drawings as his words. And during and it goes on about how the during the process uh, details would emerge and Lowell's interpreted them. And in later interviews it seems that Lowell made use of magic to read the man's thoughts. And again he learned about the distant lost city in some nameless desert and that desert had three star steelies. I, and they just so happen to be identical in shape and arrangement to those in Thrushmore. On the last page of the notebook, uh, he learned in his interviews, talks more about what he's learned, and then he just begins writing the, the writing goes far beyond like this is what I did you know this is what I did this is what I learned from the interview it starts going into maniacal fervor about his obsession with the city like I must get there I must see it I have to be the first one there the discover I am the only one who can discover it the discovery is mine alone
Does anybody want to do anything else in there? I'm taking that information, but if there's nothing else to find, then no. Nope. There is... Is there... There is a small trunk. It is inside the room. And there's a lot of stuff in there. Your, uh, your lockpick got you past it easy. I'm just going to put these in Discord. Okay. Because I'm probably going to have to transfer some of them. Yeah. Um, is there any... Any use to studying the legs a bit more? Like looking at them, seeing if they... How they detach? Why they were detached? Did they detach on their own? Or were they blown apart by a fireball? You could try. That would be medicine or survival. Medicine or survival. Well, hey, I've got oh. really good survival, so I'm going to roll survival. Uh, 21. For me. 23 for me. Since I'm the only one who can benefit from it, I feed that spellbook to my familiar. I figured you would. Uh, this next part in Astral, or in Discord is... As long as you guys found it, you're good. But I'll tell you what you found anyways. It's just a bunch of books. Psychic surgery, that's cool. Yeah, I don't know if that translates well to 2e. I'll have to figure it out. There's a I wonder if it's something that Dr. Knuckles could use. All right, so the two that were looking at the legs again, based on your survival rules, um, you have seen something similar to this in the wild. Like you, you know of animals that do this same kind of thing to where if part of their body is injured, they'd attach it. So this is a lizard. Or starfish. So that scroll is actually just a spell. So I, you can have one knackles, but I'll feed the other one to the familiar because then we have it forever, not just once. So let me ask, do, do you think that both parts will regrow or just the one? I look at Ray like, what are you even talking about? Oh, the legs? That's so five minutes ago. And I open the other door. Dr. Knackle picks up the legs, puts them over his shoulders. He's going to carry <laughs> these until they regrow. I'm and when so they do, he'll, he'll know that. about it. Like, he'll be the first to know. <laughs> Wait, will the, the, the top will. regrow? Or he'll find will out the when they try to strangle his kidneys. Yes. That is, the, that is my question. <laughs> we'll find out soon. Oh, you I guys. Mean, you plant the legs, point. water them, take care of them until they grow. Give them nutrients. We will take all those books also, obviously. Right. Oh, God. No. So I just I just have this mind, vi mind, mind thought. Mind vision? I had the mind vision of, like, pieces and bits of Knackle's body, like, skewering inside these legs and just, like, starting to feed them, like, nutrients. <laughs> John is really stuck on those legs. I'm going in the closet. You know, if we had a pair of arms, we could grow a palm tree. Now, I have a very important question. Can I give these legs to tiny I want not to laugh. <laughs> these are full person, like, these are full-size legs. Mm, I'm aware, yes. This is why I ask. Just glue tiny knuckle to the top of the legs. Exactly, we'll figure it out later. But for now, yes, we, have, we must continue. But I'm glad that you picked up the legs. Your kidneys are going to get strangled. My kidneys I are going to get strangled. I need Dr. Knackle to make a reflex save. Oh! oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You're trying to do that, uh, that Black Widow move where the legs wrap around and swing you and, you know. The best, the best way for anyone to die. <laughs> you almost critically fail. 
Jeez. Wow. But it's just a regular failure. Oh my gosh. So okay. it's almost so these you know, the legs are just flopping. The the, the torso part is just kinda of hanging off your bag and the legs are just there. Uh, you know, smoldering, a little smoky. And then all of a sudden it feels like somebody hits you in the eye with a bunch of dust. And you are dazed. Thank you for the follow, Tempest Dama. Did any of us see like what exactly just happened? Dr. Knackle just Not me, yells. I'm in the closet. Ah, uh, my eyes. Uh, I, I was watching. Do I do I see? Casimir, like, that door leads to stairs that go up to uh, what you believe to be an attic because these stairs are very unused. There are cobwebs all over them. I hear all the commotion. I'm like, Knackles will be fine. I go in the attic. Uh, wait for me. I'm coming along. But not in front. You can go in front. You right, shoved so me through a door. Carrying a dazed... Knackles in tow. <laughs> kind of dragging knackles. him along with the legs. At one point, he'd check the torso into a wall to try and get it to calm down. Just bump. You arrive in the attic. I don't know if I did dynamic lighting in here. I did, but I didn't turn it on. There we go. <laughs> So you're in the attic. It looks like an attic. Are you sure you don't want to put those legs down? And you hear sobbing. Like that creepy... <laughs> send uh, Brandon out in front. I'm going to go take a look. It's like, uh, all right, I'll go. Oh, Brandon, that's right. Oh, different voice. Okay, Dad. I'll go look. There's a lady. She's crying. <laughs> Don't cry, lady. <laughs> Brandon is so pure. I don't, so I don't pure. Want you to cry, lady. Yeah. Don't cry, Hello, lady. Bro. Roar, chomp. Wait till me it's full. So pure. <laughs> <laughs> Still pure. You just hit, just hear him go. I'm gonna go check out the crying lady. Actually, no, I'm not. This is probably a haunt, so I shove Ray at the crying lady. Do the ghost thing. Be useful. Ha! You didn't shove me this time. It's about yeah, time so for him just... to do something oh. useful. He hasn't yet. As you continue to move further, further into the into the attic and and follow the way that Brandon had gone, yeah, you you see a lot of a lot of fungus, a lot of mold growing up in here fibrous plants sprouting out of broken clay pots. It's very, very dim light up here. And now Smell I know dust, how dust, decay. And now I know how Luca feels. What the hell? I'm just being shoved around. I'm gonna walk up to the lady. And oh, Rai, you see a... You know what you see? A, a lady? No, you see a 10 minute break. <laughs> what? <laughs> da -da, da -da. I thought oh, you were from the distance. I didn't, I didn't realize what time it was. I'm sorry. But yes, everyone, please stick around. We will find out what new friend Rai has just bumped into after 10 minute word from sponsors that we don't have. Whale's Whiskey. Our, our sponsors? Yes. <laughs>
And we are back. Rai has decided to approach the crying woman as he makes each individual step closer and closer to this lady who is crouched on the floor crying. Brandon continually uh, reports to Slan, you know, don't cry lady, don't cry lady. And then as she notices Rai and Brandon there, uh, she takes her hands off of her face. Her tears, not regular tears, but tears of blood. For the splittest of second, Brandon says, That's the lady that chased me in the forest. I don't like this lady. The lady chased me. Hello, lady. Get her. How are you? Get her. And she is completely in white. And Slan immediately, when, when Brandon mentions, mentions white, you remember the lady in white that came rushing at you. The ghostly figure from your first night in Thrushmore. Are you okay? We would... Hopefully. No, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. She continues to cry. And Rai, as you take your next step to where you are on the map now, you see that she she struggles like it's it's a cry and then a, it's a <laughs> and her hands begin to elongate into almost sharp talons. Her whiteness loses. It's pure. It's pureness becomes when, red. When when she do, starts doing this, um, I'll tell her there's no need for violence here. We are here to talk. Um, I'm going to take take a defensive precaution. As soon as you say that, she looks up at you, and it's that that uh, tropish banshee scream. She goes, "Get out of my house!" As her like hair waves, and you feel the like the pulse of the scream push against you. And then she goes back and cries a little bit more, and. As if she's struggling. Uh, okay. 
and uh so just to be clear we were here just to investigate this house you're here because we're called to a ethereal voice to this house and then we know some of the souls are being chosen for the steelies outside being absorbed into the steelies correct we know some of the the souls in this home. Some of the occultists here have perverted them and they are feeding their god. And we have come here to to stop um, that. And I it seems that you might be under the same corruption are you is there she kind of cuts you off and she says that bitch is defiling my home and you feel that wave of scream again do you know where she is she cries her arms grow longer I'm gonna take us like a five foot step back they shorten slightly. Um, we are here to stop the corruption of this house. To stop the def defilation of this house. Corruption has nothing to do with me. This is my uh, this is my son's doing. your son. Oh boy, so this is the Bates Hotel. Is there any way to stop this process? I've been this <laughs> been this way for 20 years! And again, you feel that the waft. Damn, Dwayne, I got goosebumps. You said that. <laughs> I do. I am sorry, it seems that you are in pain. That you are suffering. If I if there was anything I could do, it'll take another five foot step back just to show that I don't want to combat here. Um Her arms go back to normal length, but the hands are still talonish. She still has her red hue. Her white dress is turned bloody. Um, can I... Okay, so I, I am a ghost hunter. Yes. And this does seem to be apparition-like. Is there a roll I can make? You can make an occult roll. Occult roll. Uh, can I make that a Boneyard Spirit lore roll? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I'll use a bonus die on that, sure. Okay. Is that just a D? Just a, uh, I just re-roll? A roll with advantage. Okay. 29, please. So, based on what you see and how she's acting, she is a ghost of sorts. Not done by any corruption but held in limbo. Is there anything I can do to bring you peace? Clen cleanse my home. Kill my son. Who is your son? Free my love. My love. All right. I think we can. Uh, I think we can work with that, my lady. Thank you for your time. And I'll go back and tell everyone what I heard when it talked about. And be, um, so, 
the reason she's here and the reason we're here seem to be the same thing. We should just go and kill more cultists. There are other stairs, right? Uh, yes, but before you leave, give me a persuasion check, Fry. Okay. See if she believes you. Survival thievery. Diplomacy? Diplomacy, yeah. Uh, so bad. Should have saved my roll. Whatever. Nat 20, please. Nat 20! Yeah, what? Yes! Oh. <laughs> Dwayne's sad because he wanted to do something cool that monster could do. Well, you want to know what? That actually doesn't beat the DC. Damn! No! It doesn't matter because it's a <laughs> natural 20. Even in Pathfinder, that still wins. Unless yes. the DM says otherwise. But there are still consequences. <laughs> Okay. Well, yes. to be fair, I've been trying to de-escalate the situation from the beginning. Yes. So, she slightly dims, gaining a little bit back of her whiteness. And then, as if a moment of clarity, no cries, no screams. She just looks at you and says, Thank you. And that music matched perfect. That's why I changed it. Oh, did I you? Will, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> like, I, I stopped will, right when I said thank you. I like, because my scythe is in one hand, I'll kind of like twirl it so that the blade is, uh, blade is down and bow. And then uh, walk backwards and excuse myself. She tells you to seek the basement. I will. Thank you, my lady. Oh, well then, that's where I'm going, not it to those been, other upstairs. It has been a pleasure hearing your story. And if you need to converse before you move on. You can always find me around town. She continues to cry. Well, All right, time to go, trigger. folks. All right, so... Third basement. Where do you want to go from here? Straight to the basement the fastest way possible. <laughs> Straight to the basement the fastest way possible. Okay. Not the safest, the fastest. Oh, the fastest way possible. Okay. I would like to go a straight line through that asteroid field. Exactly. So the fastest way into the basement... <laughs> is to blow a hole through the floor. No. Uh, I was literally thinking the same thing. Use gravity. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> uh, everybody are actually Rye and Slon, Sense Motive. That's not a thing. You'll have to tell them what yeah, you actually want. Yeah, what is... Yeah, yeah, you cross yeah, the five yeah. E-streams again. Sense motive? Is not a skill. It's probably an application of a skill, but it's not an actual skill. Five E-stream has been crossed. Well, five E doesn't have sense motive. Five 3. E has... 3.5 E-stream has been crossed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, sense motive is an action in Pathfinder. Yeah, but they don't know what that is because it's not a skill. Oh. Uh, what should I roll? Uh, roll me perception. I will set a DC. Twenty six, please. Thanks. Lon, you don't pick up on it. Um. Rai, you kind of get an, an undertone, especially dealing with ghosts. Uh, basements aren't always basements. And specifically because you know that there are cultists here, 
they're probably not just hanging out in a basement. Crawl space? Maybe? No, it would be too small. Basement. Cellar? Is there like a wine cellar or something on the property? Or a crypt? Ah. Yeah, something something under the ground. Basement denotes something sub-level. So it wouldn't be like first floor. It'd have to be something underground. So any structure underground, I think we should go take a look at. High or low? Uh, you're rolling? I'm rolling. High. All right, you're going into the basement. If I you get everybody in the basement. That was fascinating watching the way it unrendered the stuff. Oh, uh, oh. I mean, nothing. It's fine. <laughs> Don't worry. It's fine. You can't get over there. Jimmy. It's fine. This is all fine. <laughs> Everything's, Everything's fine. fine. Yep. Everything's fine. Casimir yeah. is not worried about the place we cannot get to. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you cannot get there. <laughs> I remember what. Oh, well, I guess I'll save my old man speech for later. All right. So the stairs that were in the hallway from the second floor lead. Uh, when you go all the way back down to. You're in the basement, pretty much. I'll just put it that way. I can't remember what room it comes off of. <laughs> So you are now in the basement, the actual basement of Iris Hill, underneath the main mansion area. Feeling so right many maps. Wait, though. And what you enter now Wait, is... Though. Hold on. If they figured out it wasn't the actual basement, and they said, try the mausoleum, huh? Why are we in the basement? I, I are confused. Yeah, I'm confused because I said crypt. I thought the percentage said, roll was like to see what happened to us some secret way. Nope. Well, there's they... a lot of there's been a lot of clues, and I was seeing if you could put them all together. Well, yeah, but if the two players Poorly. specifically said it's not the basement, I would not have gone in the basement as as the character. Then where would you like to go? The crypt. That's where Ray and Slan wanted to go. I open the door. Close the door. Close the door. <laughs> Not necessarily door. on purpose. Oh my god. Oh, there is a crypt. There is a crypt. Oh, hello. Trying to move um, everybody over here. I'm gonna not Maybe. pay attention to the death cultists over there. a little bit. Pay no attention to the Bayaki in the corner. <laughs> no attention to anything. It is a friendly Bayaki. So you come down a round set of stairs. To the north, as soon as you come down the stairs and into this mass hallway, you see a star steely. The third of a triplet two of which are above ground. The third sits below the mansion in Iris Hill. Ooh. Uh, so I am going to um, respectfully request uh, a fireball to the face. It's a giant obelisk. It's not going to help. 
we can't really do anything to it. Not not. But it's, he's asking not me to here. literally fireball him. That's what I thought too. <laughs> <laughs> Fireballing, Fireballing the Steely is. isn't really going to do anything except scorch a rock. To be fair, I assumed we could see some people in there. Can we you? cannot. Yeah, no. everybody can see that. <laughs> and yeah, I don't know. See the Steely. Well, yeah, the, 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 there's no there's there's line of sight out in both directions. That's why I said the thing I said. <laughs> For the whole party. Yeah, we can see we can see the steely, but not anything after that. Which is by design, I'm guessing. Yeah. Becky, Becky a has a much Becky has a much longer range range line of sight though. I would like to go right here and see what I see. So as you step into just past the threshold of this hallway the room starts to open up and you see candles lit just at the edge of your your vision you see large pillars that go around a large room with a giant undescribable yellow sign in the middle of the floor this is so horrible you can't describe it but you'll try anyways <laughs> <laughs> you see glowing pale lights and a ring of cultists all wearing yellow garb I'm just gonna sit there and, and motion for like I'll, I'll back up five feet just in case they haven't seen me yet and uh I'll, I'll tell the rest of them uh, I counted at least five cultists there with what looks to be a sigil on the floor. Well, that you could fireball. I think we should kill them. Yes, all of a sudden fireball to the face. Sounds much better. I call it the FF maneuver. The fire I enjoy face this plan. maneuver. The FFM. Not to be confused with BM, which is bad manners, and everyone should. I shush Ray and say, if you're going to do it, do it quick, Slon, before they attack us. So nope. As I watch the DM internally count down. Yeah, let's go for it. Fireball to the center on the yellow symbol. Mm, I might center it on that cultist in the middle. Oh, is there? I didn't say cultist yet. If you well, you'd have to say your character moves up next to John's before you could. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see. Yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So on the on the southern edge of that symbol, like right where the first edges of the cultists are. Yeah, that's what I'd do. Right there. Okay. Um, fireball. I would say releases a fireball. I'm gonna charge it. Can so I? Your uh, fireball can makes I it to about here. Uh oh, that's not good. Where it explodes. No, no. Oh. There's an anti-magic field. Oh, no. No, not an anti-magic field. There were some glyphs. Yeah, no, an anti-magic field would have just stopped the spell. Where did it go off? Right in between these two pillars. Oh, okay. So the three of us are going to get hit by my fireball. That's what he's oh. telling us. No, no, it's only no. a 20 it's foot only burst. It's only 15 feet. It's, so it's 20 tw feet. It is 20, but that's only uh, going to get. That's, that's only going to get to right here where I just moved right. You guys are actually back here at the edge of the hallway. Yeah, you're, right. Right. you're literally okay. one square away. <laughs> the downside is you wasted a third level spell slot. And they know we're here. And nice. they know you're here. Can I do a cult check, maybe, or uh, a can of check to see about these glyphs? Maybe I'm not the best person to do that. It's a warding glyph. You just set it off. That one's down. There might be more. That one's not oh. there anymore. <laughs> yeah, that one's not there anymore. Because <laughs> John, the player, doesn't know how these glyphs work. You so. can physically see them with your eyeballs. They glow. They're not secret. So now, but they're done now. Like they're, they're that just one is. Shots. There might be more. Yeah. There may be more, but that one is gone. We'll find out. But as that goes off, 
the murmuring of the cultists stop and you hear a female voice from far in the room she says if you think your condition means you're important you're wrong you are nothing you are an ember floating from a putrid bonfire that will also wink out in the cold death of the universe we are all worthless before the unspeakable one and even if he has marked you I am the one that will open the world to him. Not you. Not Lowell's. You will not take my place, and you will die. The Yellow King. Weird, that's my line. Is coming. Roll initiative. Hmm. Bitch stole my line. Uh, 27, please. 28. What's that other music that has sounds cooler? It's not... 20. Yeah, I like this one better. Can I get a dun 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 No? 18. Dun dun dun. My computer's being slow. No. Actually, you know what? Just roll a d20 and add your perception modifier. Oh my slow. Why can I? Oh dear, Hold mine's going weird too. Twenty-two. You got a twelve on a nit- wow, perception. Wow. I have a fourteen. Oh, oh wow, oh they changed everything. That's right. I have an eight. Huh? What? It's because you are not a wisdom character. Um, I am not. Astral did a bunch of updates that changed the HUD. So. I forgot that things that get added are a little bit different. Oh, that didn't work. Uh, how do I do this? The old-fashioned way with the text document. Yeah, with my notebook. <laughs> Till we ad- adapt to the changes, anyways. <laughs> adapt to the changes. I don't know what's going on. All right, so Knuckles got a 28. So did I. Kazmir's 28. Rye, 27. Slon, 18. Which is really Slon and Hardy. Yeah. Uh, Luca? I had gotten a 22. No. Yes. Yes. Sorry. All right. Cultist guys. Actually, let's roll this one. This one. That's a 21. Bad lady. It's an 18. Where is this initiative? Knuckles many mouths. Yeah. Check all the mouths. <laughs> and these guys. Ah. Dr. Knuckle. Oh my god. Would you be kidney. able would would you be able to cast healing now that you are no. a holy man? Don't even joke about these things. How dare you? Please continue How... joking about these things. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> How dare you suggest magic? But he is silence. But you are full of holes, Knackle. Yes, he looks quite like Swiss cheese. You should use your scientific method to learn how to stab. 
Would you like me? <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> Dr. Knuckles, do you need some aloe? <laughs> the only... <It's... laughs> oh my god. The best... <laughs> I'll just walk it off, guys. <laughs> I'm shipping you aloe vera as we speak. Okay. Uh, between Casimir and Knuckles, who has the highest dexterity? Uh, Mine is 19. Casimir? Yep, Casimir. All right, Casimir, you are first. Just to mess with Space Lord, who probably went to bed. Uh, I'm going to hide, and I'm going to cast Mirror Image, which means to even roll to hit, you have to make two flat checks. Because I'm double concealed, both against DC 8. <laughs> so you have to roll 9 or higher twice to even get a chance to hit me. Got it. <laughs> and my hard roll is 33. And then, because I got a new skill feat, I can move like a boss while hiding. I'm done. I moved. Dr. Knuckles. Dr. Knuckles. immediately drinks a dose of Drake Heart Mutagen to give myself some more armor class and I believe a perception bonus. Okay. Dr. Knackle then strides over here and then he and um, strides over here dagger in hand and that is my turn I quietly think to myself he's gonna die <laughs> uh, he's not healed himself Rye I am the muted uh I am going to head the other way around the circle. Da, 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 da. Um, 5, 10, 15, 20. You can do it. Yeah, I was going to say you can do a double move 30. of 50 and still get a hit. Three actions. Yep. 45, 40, 45, 50, 55, uh, we'll say 60. Be within five feet of both of those guys, and I'm gonna hit number three. I'm gonna attack him. I'm attack him good. Okay. Not really though. Seventeen. That will hit. Yes. Oh god. These are just these are just little lackeys. Because you're hitting the trash. Hint. Hit the lady. Eleven. Always hit the boss. Ignore the trash. Let them stab you. Fair. All right. The lady who says, uh, I'm fair. summoning an elder god should probably die first. <laughs> summoning an elder god. It's weird how that works. Uh, oh, that geez, brings us to I'm sorry. Luca. Oh, boy. Okay. It is... Is it to the left or to the right? The f to the south. Oh, south. Okay. Yes. I mm, will just scoot close enough to see, but not close enough to get injured because I am squishy and good with ketchup. They're extremely far away, and because you're a bard, I'm pretty sure none of your spells can hit from there. You are... Damn. I don't know, 120 feet away from the tar nearest target. How's uh? Very how's, big room. How's the corner there? 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 55, 60, You would need a spell that can hit 90 feet to hit the boss. Oof. You probably have a couple, but 60 feet is basically all of them. So you could do a double move, or you could just... You could do a double move and true strike Dr. Knackles. So maybe he won't fail at stabbing. And then do something else on your next turn. I like this plan. Wait, that's um, a spell. Hey. Wait, no, that's a spell. Wait, no. No, don't do it. <laughs> uh, you have no idea. I'm just singing to you, so... Yeah, just an inspiring song. 
Doesn't tingle. So, so mm. it doesn't tingle. If you have a problem with your songs tingling, you must talk to your doctor. <laughs> it's like it's like a Viking war chant. It just makes you feel like stabbing harder. Okay, so um, we'll never here. tell that's, him otherwise. That's one of never my know, newer right? ones. Right? Okay. Uh, let me scroll up to that. Dear, no, Dear of Doom is not what I want to cast on Doctor Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Obviously, uh, true strike. DM. All it does, Doctor Knuckles, is give you a big bonus to hit. Um, oh, yeah. I'm lovely. Plus, but... plus one. I can't find that one, but I do have guidance. No. I feel obligated guidance still to skills. ask: Is there a way for me to resist? Just because of the, uh, the class I'm ability. I'm looking. Okay. I'm looking. No. No. Okay. Right. Uh. Well. Inspire courage, inspire defense. The next Dr. time Nackle will have strong words it's, after it's this. Right right now it's fine. The next time you make an attack roll before the end of your turn, you get advantage. Oh. And it ignores circumstance penalties and flat checks required because of concealment. Yep. But only the next attack, not like you know, lingering. Alrighty. So it sounds a little something like, "Please, Doctor Knackle, don't die." <laughs> Just. His face twists in ways no face ever should as he looks over like, okay. Right. I, I will try. Actually stab your enemies. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> With science. The Vikingist of dirges. Dr. Knackle <laughs> rages. It's not even his turn. He rages. Alice is giving you a free uh, hero point for your singing. So who's uh -huh. next? So we get a free hero point for drinking beer. I can do that. No. <laughs> uh, for those of you who can see, I'm guessing it might only be Becky and Rye. Oh no, I have 180 foot dark vision, sir. <laughs> I am the knight. My token might not, but the character does. Uh -oh. So yeah, I can see this can whole see... damn room like it was daylight. You can daylight. see the whole room. Awesome. <laughs> So you can see the Bayaki. Yes. And I say nothing yet. <laughs> <laughs> huh. They'll figure it out. They'll figure it out. <laughs> the Bayaki will fly up. No, no. Come up behind Rai. Yeah, yeah, okay. Unfortunately for Are you, Rai, Casimir doesn't shout. Ever. Are you sure, like, Rai is... Clear across the big echoey room with culting, or with chanting cultists. That thing's gonna hit you in the back. Oh yeah, it did. <laughs> uh, twenty-eight. Uh, yeah, that hits. Much less. Alice, I did award you a hero point for drinking beer. He's a very bad oh. influence on your life. I, I apologize. Like they are a very bad influence on your life. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I like beer. Pretty sure a 14 doesn't hit. Does not. If it does not, 23 or higher. 24, because Ty goes a defender, yeah? Alright, so you're only going to take 7 slashing as one of its claws rips into your back. Is there a horrible yeah, cosmic okay. horror side effect? No. Probably. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. It has to Project. do something else first. <laughs> <laughs> Fair, Alex. No, that was Fair. that was just that was just the impregnation. Oh. Uh, now it is Slon's turn and his party of peppy pets creatures. Party of peppy pets. Yeah. Peppy pets. The peppy pets. This is your swan song, Slan. Send those bitches in and have them kick ass. You're muted, by the way. Oh, you're just counting. Never mind. Uh, yeah, I was just counting. Um, okay. One, two, three. Something like that. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Plus one hero nice. point to key, even though I'm not a viewer. <laughs> I'm going to log into, right. view, into chat right now. Um, this is too important, Ryan. I'm sorry. 
I'm gonna vomit swarm. Oh. Uh huh. Oh. You should where, probably where you? see a doctor about that. Well, he's gonna well, hit you, is what he's saying, because swarms. he can hit the Bayaki and cultists. Yeah. This is okay. It's a worthy sacrifice. I have just now received full. I've received permission to do a, th a third level harm spell. So the, the four people closest to me in that direction all need to make reflex saves or be sickened. Oh, that just means I just can't do a thing, huh? You said reflex? Basic What's reflex DC? save. Basic. Uh, it just says basic reflex save. I don't know what that means. His spell save DC is probably 21 by now, most of you are. Yeah. I'm the Minus only one who'd be higher. Oh, good. You're not near me, haha. Uh, reflex. Ayaki first, 22. I don't know what I'm looking at to tell you what the DC is. Sorry. 20. What's what's your, what what's level your... spell is it? It's a level 2 spell. Uh, spell level doesn't actually matter in Pathfinder. What's your uh, wisdom modifier? Um, Wisdom is 4. 22. I was going to say, it's going to be at least 18 if it's a level 2 spell. Yeah, spell level actually doesn't change in Pathfinder. It's just proficiency plus ability modifier, so 22. Until you become expert, and then it'll be 24. So Bayaki saves. Cultist, probably not. They rolled a 22 as well. <laughs> they don't even get their bonus yet. And um, everyone takes 10 damage. What kind of damage? Good question. Um, Italy damage. Probably piercing because it's a swarm. Oh, where did that go? It is piercing, yes. So it's half that or is 10 and a half? No, it's I roll 10. I roll 10. Basic re reflex, and if you fail your saving throw, it also becomes sickened. Oh, so you still take the whole damage? It doesn't say anything about half damage on a failed save, correct? What about if we if you saved? Everybody then succeeded. Then you're just not sickened. If you had okay. failed, you'd get sickened. Got it. So, cultist number three goes down. Cultist number two is bitten by swarms of what, whatever kind of insects are vomiting out of your face. Um, all of them. <laughs> all of the insects. <laughs> Creative. There's even a ladybug in there, but those little fuckers bite. So when this cultist I was going to say, that's dies, a good swarm. When this cultist dies, I would like to do a thing. Um, specifically, I'll trigger my death's call. That a reaction? Yep. What does uh, that do? I gain temporary hit points equal to the triggering creature's level plus my spell casting ability modifier. One. Okay, so one plus uh, four? Yeah. So five. We get five points. And the way this... Uh, happens is you actually see like Rai stretches her arm out and the bluish green energy that you've uh, seen in the previous fight kind of uh, curls into his arm and his skin actually starts to like almost become translucent and you see like it start to shrivel up and bones start protruding as, Oh as Rai, my... that's just <laughs> As is my curse. Who's next? Oh. Did 
Salon move all of your you yes, can move all your yeah he, guys? he he did double and triple moves but most of them were so far back <laughs> okay it's the lady's turn the angry lady angry lady come at me you foul temptress is going to cast. Uh, Slon, I need you to make a... Actually, Slon and Becky make will saves. Slon got a 30. You are okay. Becky's save. When it says 30 foot... Oh, it uses, uses my save, so should I roll again? Or is she get 30? Nah, she can keep 30. Alright. Alright, you guys are okay. And then she's going to move over here. That is her turn. Then it is a person that you do not see. Another person that you do not see. And now the cultists. One. Two on Dr. Knackle. My body's ready. All right, Dr. Knackle. Body is ready. Uh, 25. Misses. 25. <laughs> Misses. Rye. 17. Miss. Even less. Top of the round, Casimir. You do not know the dance of death, do you? <laughs> Raven does its thing and flutters over to the lady. I'm using one of my many hero points I never use to force you to roll willpower saving throw twice with disadvantage. Roll willpower twice with disadvantage. Roll twice, take the worst. I said that terribly. Oh, okay. Uh, 33. They're even higher, so 33. We won't get the full minute out of it, but she silenced. Okay. She can't use any spell with a verbal component. Get it. That's it. I rehide. Dr. Knuckles. Okay, very first thing. Dr. Uh, Dr. Rages, of course, yes. Dr. Knuckle Rages then proceeds to stab the cultist number six directly in front of him mm -hmm. with the dagger does a 30 hit it does and it's almost critical so that is a total of 11 damage And a second stab. Does a 22 hit? Yes. All right. That is 12 damage. Dead. As Dr. Knackle takes his dagger and slits the throat of this cultist. And looks over to where he thinks Casimir is with a little grin. <laughs> Did I do it right? <laughs> Casimir's, Casimir's 40 feet in the other direction. Doesn't say anything. Right. No, 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 no. You look over in the corner and wink, and then from right behind you in your ear. Well done. <laughs> is that all from you, Knuckles? Got him. That is all from Knuckles. All right. Uh, right. I'm going to say this aloud. Uh, sorry, Slon, but uh, I guess you're going to hear the call of the grave, too. I'm going to take my scythe and put it in front of me murmur a couple words and slam it on the ground and I'm going to cast a third level harm spell three action harm spell 
and we're going to do that at third level. Okay. So they have to make everyone within a 30 foot cone has to make or 30 foot emanation has to make fortitude saves. Uh, it's a basic save. So Becky and Salon, I believe, also have to. 27 save me. The saves. You take 20. half damage. 25 for the Bayaki. Saves. Uh. Eight for the cultists. <laughs> I, I would love to tell Critical you that it failure. Does, but it does not. <laughs> Critical failure, so make sure you read what that does. If it's a basic save, it doesn't mean anything special. I don't think it does anything special. Yeah, a basic save is just half or all. Uh, so... So you're going to take... Healing for the... Well, healing... So you're going to take eight. So eight, sixteen, thirty-two, and then another three D eight. Uh, Twelve for thirty-two, forty-four damage. Those that saved can take half, so twenty-two. Uh, the rest of them take that full brunt of Wait, that damage. What? He cast it as a third level spell. He's doing it right. Yes. Forty-four damage for the failed savers. Twenty-two damage for the successful savers. Negative. Yeah. Oh, this is negative damage. Yeah, that includes Slon. Oh, awesome. If it is negative damage, though, I did look this up, um, and they are healed through negative damage. I'm trying to harm them, so it does. It just doesn't do anything. Yeah, that's also correct. So, if they're immune to negative, it's just nothing happens. Or, yeah, or if they absorb, or if they negative, absorb no or negative, nothing happens. The Bayaki smiles. The cultists die. <laughs> well, aren't you a big boy? I guess I know what not to do against you now. And uh, that's my turn. Luca. Wait, sorry, Becky. Becky's dead. Oh. Sorry, Becky. Oh, no, Becky. Becky's just asleep. Becky's just sleeping. Ah, Dad, Becky. She's Becky's sleeping. Dead. Becky, stay with us. How is Becky dead? Oh, I healed for that. It's According right. to my sheet, she has 40 hit points. And yeah, that was before you leveled them up. No, I leveled it up and I added. She would get eight times your level plus her con modifier at each level. So she has 48 minimum. Eight times six, and then whatever her con modifier is. Oh, I thought is, it was eight six. plus. I thought it was eight plus. Just no, they get level. hit points every level, just like you when they're animal companions. Okay, then it's all messed up, and I have no idea what her hit points are at. What's what her constitution it's, modifier? Um, constitution is plus two. So then she has forty-eight plus twelve plus eight, sixty-eight hit points. Sixty-eight hit points. Okay. They're all gonna so she have just took forty-four. Yeah, and then all your other ones are going to, except for the bear, the wolf is going to have 56 plus con times 6. And then the bear is going to have 70 plus con times 6. They're way more, yeah. way stronger than um, machine. Yeah, that's because level up, leveling up to mature is awesome. This is why your class is OP and awesome at this stage. Yep. They have more hit points than some of these level 7. And the party. The bear has more hit points than I do. So the bear's at 88. More hit points than me. The catch is to get less actions. And the wolf's at 80. <laughs> Send them all to Melison. Don't worry about that last cultist. Or the Bayaki, if you want. Okay, yeah. So, I don't even know where... Let's see. Let's click on Becky so I can get some... Uh... So, does Becky live? Yes, Becky lives. Yay! Uh, so, yeah, Becky's okay. just gonna... 30, 30, 40, 45. And attack her. 
Or do I get how many actions? Uh, animal companions get two. Yeah, so then uh, Becky gets an attack. Uh, I'm going to pull up the sheet again. Keep clicking around. It's 12 is... Does this 27 hit? Yes. Okay. And then she gets 2d8 plus 4 piercing. And plus 4, 17 piercing. Good roll. Nice. Brandon's going to walk into this not realizing that something might happen. I don't know. Is anything happening when I walk into the circle? No, that glyph's gone. That's that's specifically the glyph we oh, set off. Oh, that was specifically. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, he gets to move up but doesn't get to attack. And... Right about there. And Slon is. What's Slon gonna do? Slon's just gonna um, stay here and longbow at the this thing, the Bayaki. It's a twenty-one hit. Twenty-one does not hit. Okay, let's try it again. No. Let's try it one more time. Definitely not. All right, my turn's over. Uh, that brings us to ah, the one who shows up. Oh, I. Hmm. Mm? Do I? Did I? When do I? <laughs> Did we skip you? Did we skip you? Maybe. I'm not really sure. Luki, Luka took an action in round one, but nothing in round two. The round one action was the true strike. Oh, I thought I said Luka, and I thought they did something. Not in round two. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> it's, it's, it's all good. Um, let's see here. Same advice yeah. from Casimir. Don't waste time on the cultist. Go from Ellison. Where, yeah, where the sound of wolf growls are. I skipped a whole bunch of people. So this is why oh. I don't like writing it down, because I can't read my own handwriting. <laughs> oh. I'm, I'm going to... Hmm, if I did sound burst, would, that would affect probably everyone near me, wouldn't it? You're not going to hit anybody useful either, because of where you're at. You can't, you can't get to her and use that spell. Your best oh, bet is to use dinner. one... Your best bet is to use one action to go, like, here... And then you just use a range spell, something single target. I, I'll do that. That sounds good. I will use blistering invective. Wait, that's thirty feet. Is that still? No. Uh, what do you have for level yeah. three? What are the spells? Level three spells are enthrall, mind reading, and heroism. Uh. Cast heroism on Bradford. The wolf. Fuck yeah. Alright, so that's two action somatic. Uh, targets a creature. Ten minutes. Grants a plus one status bonus to attack rolls. Perception checks. Saving throws and skill checks. So, Luca will begin to strum on, on his lute and, and howl? sing. You gonna howl because it's a wolf you're boosting? So all of a sudden the lute starts sounding puppy. like... <laughs> all of a sudden the lute starts sounding like medieval version of heavy metal and he's just like you know, <laughs> doing the thing and, and he's he just goes oh, woo! and Approved. That's, that's the whole song. Hail to the year. So who else did you skip? I skip skip the Bayaki. You can't skip the Bayaki. He needs to hurt somebody. Yeah. I'm I'm fine with skipping. 
skipping the playoffs. No, no, no. Cosmic Horror Monsters must always get turns. Bayaki is going to stay on Rai. <laughs> What's your ancestry again, Rai? Uh, bones. Is he going to have... No, your ancestry. That's your race. No, that's my miss... my curse. Um... We're gonna call yeah, you a human. Is he gonna have toasted oh, yeah, human I mean, on? Is he gonna have toasted human on rye? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes, I was. What I was going with, <laughs> going for. Oh. Uh, that is a net twenty. Hell yeah! 37. I mean, no, don't hurt rye. No. Wait, what? I mean, that hit. That... I always root for the cosmic horror monster. <laughs> does that, <laughs> does that hit? I'm not sure. Hit. I'm not sure if that hits or not. You know what? Let's call it a tie, and then we can move on with our lives. It is a critical hit. Yes. Which may do all kinds of fun things. Mmm. Bad things are about to happen. Alright. Make the bad things happen. Uh, I need to make this this other attack, though. Just to make sure more bad stuff doesn't happen. FYI, we're going to go slightly over players, because last session... Uh, does a 19, or no, wait. 29. <laughs> yes, 29. 29 no, hits. no, you don't hit with a 29. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so first it throws its claws into you. Not so bad. It throws uh, them? They like detach? Never mind, just, just do it. <laughs> Seven. The hand detaches from the stump. It's only 13 slashing. Okay, so that's, uh, let's see, I healed up to 72, down to 59. And then it pulls you in and bites you. All right. I'm here for the crit. Give me that beautiful Oh, yeah, footage. I didn't roll that crit damage. Oh, uh, shouldn't have said nothing. <laughs> another, another nine. Or no, nice. another six. I'm sorry, I can't add. Six points. All right, it's down to 53. Okay, so when it bites into you, you take another four, five, four, nine, twelve piercing. Twelve minus five for my temporary hit points. Seven, four, forty-six. I'm at forty-six. And you lose. Two constitution until you take a That's long rest. That's bad. That's really, really bad. That also removes uh, twelve hit points immediately. Just right off the top. Yeah, because you're losing the. Con so I got bonus. hit for twenty-four. Yeah, removing con removes the con bonus. Oh Jesus! So I'm done with. Um, and also make sure if he has you roll a con save, you subtract two from whatever you tell him. I have er, one, one, sorry. Yeah. Okay, so 30, I'm at 34. And the Bayaki's done. <laughs> All right, that, that's a good turn. That's holy shit, that's a good turn. <laughs> holy fuck. Uh, from the uh, eastern wall. Tis but a flesh wound. <laughs> You see a uh, creature come through the wall, much like you've seen the cultists and that woman travel through the wall. If I can find, I have so I've made so many creatures for this thing. It's so hard to find them. It's right. I, I can reveal it if you want me to. I can see it. Uh, no, that's not the one. Oh. There was another one I didn't pull on here. Should be under K. Oh, there it is. Looks like a, a man, but his skin is very, very yellow. It kind of hangs off of his body. He looks like a very old time preacher. A nice hat. His eyes are bright yellow. As soon as he walks through the, the wall, he says, You call 
my lady. But she can't speak because she's silenced. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's all he can do. Mad lady. Can she get this off? No, it's verbal. Crap. Therefore, I think most all of her stuff is verbal. <laughs> verbal, verbal. That's why I did it. Is that verbal? That's verbal. Uh, there are almost no spells that aren't. Yeah. Is that? Oh, uh, yep, that, okay. Okay, so, uh, <laughs> she's just gonna pull out her, her little dagger and swipe at the, the owl for 31. Yes, that hits the owl. <laughs> Oh, I, I thought you were for 31 damage. Sorry. Oh, no. Uh, only nine, nine damage. I was like, that's okay. Uh, she will go again. This is the plus eight. Uh, 12, I'm pretty sure, doesn't hit. And this is only a plus three. And I don't think a 16 hits. Uh, nope. Okay. And another person unseen moves about and back to the top, Casmer. Okay. First, shadows attack her. How long is the oh, silence for? Oh, it's gone now. Oh, it's gone. It's just one round? Because she saved, yeah. Natural 20 on the shadow attack, which is very, very bad for you. I, I listen. This can take a minute. Hold on. Sound of man's best friend beckons. 63 cold damage because it's double on a crit. 63 cold. Yep. And then, because it's only one action, magic missile. Heightened heighten to third level. All right. She is on the ropes. Hold on. Let's see what this do. Yeah, it's you should be howling for the poor lady. Tony would like to remind our wonderful DM that he has some... Oh, I've been using them. Oh, shit. <laughs> 13 force damage from the magic missile. Only one missile because one action. Well, 13 is all you needed. <laughs> I just burned all my high-level spells, by the way, but worth it. I've got nothing but level one left. So as this lady goes down, she, uh, she kind of shifts. I would also like to describe that the shadows literally tear her into bits. Oh. Like, when they grab her, it's frostbite, and they break it off if it kills her. You can yeah, do whatever frost, you want the with it. The frostbite didn't kill her, but the, the magic missile was the... Yeah, as the bits are coming off in the frostbite, the magic missile hits her right in the left eye. Caves it in. So as these, as these tendrils are pulling apart her earthly body... Her real body emerges, and it is as if a body was made out of mirrors. A person made of mirrors. Much like the individual you saw in the fort. And as that last magic missile hits her, the mirrors shatter. Immediately when she goes down, the Bayaki, uh, a portal opens up behind it. And it is pulled in. <clears throat> and is no more. The man who 
uh, came through the wall. Has to make a whole bunch of saves. Ugh. Now I'm rolling good. Oh my god. Uh, and takes 172 <laughs> psychic damage. <laughs> I assume his brain that explodes him. in his head. Yes, his it literally his. It, no, it doesn't explode. It implodes. It like deflates like a balloon. <laughs> Wait, how, how does this even happen? What There's is a he faint. They're supposed to take some damage based on how many hit points she took damage for. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Uh, the cultist Casimir bows no one can see him but he does it anyways <laughs> I just feel like he's like Beethoven Lucas you know, shivers just... felt no 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 that's not how Casimir bows <laughs> yeah the cultist the last cultist <laughs> brain is racked is he only takes truly. 49 psychic uh, and <laughs> merely goes opus. insane uh Lying on the ground, drooling, talking about yellow signs and the mad poet. But the keeper over there, yeah, his... It, it sounds like a balloon when you, like, hold the end together and it's deflating. It just kind of goes... <laughs> but his brain matter is, like, painting the back wall as it's flying out. Poor guy. I feel bad, though. <laughs> I would like that to say... The effect was gold. Whatever the denome is, because we're late, I'd like to say, just assume we super loot between chapters. <laughs> I will assume you guys super loot, and I'll put it all in the yeah. chat for later. So you guys stopped whatever was going on. Casimir, Knowledge of the Mythos, when he comes steps out of the shadows for the first time you've ever seen, actually looks relieved. Doesn't say why, though. Dr. Knackle proceeds to jump on that cultist who's insane. <laughs> Does Tiny Knackles also jump with big legs? Tiny, no, with tiny, tiny Knackles can be heard somewhere. No, he with is the, squeeing. With, with the sharp and knackle, not the teeth. Uh. So what happens hey. after we prevent the Stellas or Stells from summoning Elder Gods? So as you start to go through the information that you had found. And when you leave the, the, the manor, you see Winter and uh, Wentz waiting outside the, guard, the guardhouse on the other side of the hedge, which has started to die. And uh, she asks if you were able to find Lowell's. The ghost or the undead mother? No, the count. Oh, no, like, yeah, who's asking? that? You said she, the undead mother? No, Winter. The, the two from the uh, sleepless... person who sent us on the trip. Yeah, the person that sent you here. No, no, he's not here. We will have to hunt him down. And if you show her any of the, the journal or the documentation that you had found in the... Uh, in the study, she's able to pull resources based on her network of spies and based on what Laos has written in his journal and in his notes uh, and is able to set you up with a boat that will take you to Laos' last known location of Kazomir. I also inform them of what's in the attic of the manor. Perhaps you should make it off limits until we fulfill the promise that Ray made. I, I will do such. She I have not. booked you passage on the Selen Starling. It is helmed and is not set out to leave for another two days. But I will put you up and do what you need 
before the ship departs. She does not seem to be hurting, or at least not wanting to hurt anyone. She chased a bear through the woods. She almost attacked Slan. But she didn't, though, did she? Because she Slan submitted, and most people wouldn't submit to a horror chasing them through the woods. They need to be watchful. She is not passive. No, I would not go looking for her, but I also wouldn't antagonize her. However, if you do run across her, she could use some styling tips. How does a ghost style? I don't, I don't know. know. Okay. <laughs> so in your guys' downtime before our next season, anything that you might want to do, keep a keep a little note in your character sheets. How much time? Will, uh, it's actually... only going to be a couple of days. Oh, okay. Yeah, only a couple of days will pass by the time that you depart. That uh, means we get to roleplay the sea voyage. It's going to be a kraken. Yes. However, as the light dims on our heroes in Thrushmore. Before the a... light dims, what does the town think of us now? And will Dr. Knackle pay for his crimes? You will have to find out in Season 3. Mm. As for the town, they are happy that someone has stopped the murders and the disappearances, though they're not quite sure if you were involved or not, because based on your history. However, you are seen in a better light. That is not why my character asked. My character would actually very quietly, unless the party stopped him, even with Luca's help, because Luca has defeat. So rumors that our lady cleric friend from the asylum is essentially responsible and that they should vote her to be in charge of them now that all their other leaders are gone. Oh, at first I thought you were saying responsible for the murders. I was like, Oh, what? no. I want to make... That's uh, what I thought you said, too. But I want to I <laughs> make... Anyways. I want to make Klaxka the mayor or whatever. Oh, Winter? Yeah. Our cleric friend. I don't care about that detective agency lady. We owe our we owe the cleric. <laughs> yeah, yeah, winter. Ah, oh, yes, winter so, is coming. Stupid John question. Yes. Um, the name of the the name of the man we're going after. Lowell's. Count, Count Lowell's. Count, Count Hatherton Lowell's. Lowell's. Don't worry about the spelling. When you send me the thing to edit, I'll fix it if it's wrong. But yes, as as the light dims on the heroes, a dim light lights in a far off land where a man dressed in regal clothing hands a black book to another man. The second man grins a toothy smile, teeth rotting his eyes darting left and right maniacally. He turns to his table and starts jotting, he opens it up and starts jotting down words, talking to himself, continues writing, turns back to the man in regal clothing and says, I will have it translated within the week. As he closes the book, you see the words, Necronomicon. And that is where we will end it tonight. I've reacted appropriately in the Discord. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. <laughs> but yes, this is where we will end our season two of Strange Aeons. And I will pull up my outro sheet along with 80,000 other things. I'll tell the players while he does that. Dun 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 hedgehog. Doesn't mean you think it does. It's my character going, Ken has. I'm gonna feed that to my crow. So next Thursday, we will <laughs> not be back for the beginning of season three. Season three will come later on in the year. However, 
we will be getting Alien the RPG next Thursday, 9 p.m. It is going to be awesome. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. May I have another? But if you're looking for other terrifying tales, I'm going to get all of them incorrect, but let's see how I can do. Make sure you guys check out Call of Cthulhu on Friday afternoon. Uh, Mage Technocracy from Invictus with Love. Oh, yeah, tomorrow. Yeah. Because, well, today. Yeah, today. (laughs) Uh, Make sure you guys check out Mage Technocracy from Invictus with Love on Saturdays. Unknown Armies, Sunday afternoon. Tales of Terror and Damnation with White Walls, the Mage and Cult Crossover, Sunday night. I'll stop you there for a second and say, hey, Tony, you're still here. Guess what? For Cthulhu and Unknown Armies, that's actually at uh, 10 o'clock your time. Imagine that. You won't have to stay up till 5 a.m. Yeah, you can watch it. Talk to the. I think the Sunday one's at 9 o'clock your time. Tony's in CET. Yeah. Oh, that's right. But you guys can also check out Scarred Land, our Scarred Lands one shot. What was the name of that? Uh, something on the Voodoo bayou. on the Bayou. Voodoo on the Bayou. Dark Voodoo or not dark? I don't remember what the word was. It wasn't dark because Voodoo isn't dark, but something about Voodoo on the Bayou. Bad Voodoo on the Bayou. It wasn't. It wasn't a negative word. <laughs> I can't remember what it was. However, if you guys, that will be on Tuesday. Uh, however, if you guys are looking for awesome adventures, make sure you check out Dune on Mondays. Our Fallout 2D20 campaign on Wednesdays. And Friday afternoon, we will be, pun- or not Friday afternoon, Friday evening, we will be punching Nazis. With punching Nazis. Punching Nazis. Fuck yeah. But make sure you check out our website, verbaltales.com, to see our calendar, social media links, recap, and links to all of our partners and affiliates. Check them out, purchase awesome stuff, and support the show. But players, let everybody know, especially with all these changes, the next time that you can be uh, seen and the cool things you do outside the show. I'm Eller Shackles Online. You'll find me next tomorrow afternoon playing Call of Cthulhu. Playing, not running. Next week, though, on this channel, I'll be in charge of these Marines and space truckers, and they're all gonna die because in space, no one can hear you scream. It's because everybody else is dead. It's not that there's no sound. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's a, it's an, ex- like it's, <laughs> it's a question of, uh, of, of, does the, you know, if, if a tree falls in the forest, does it make a sound? Well, no, because no one's around here, you dumb idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and with that <laughs> <laughs> yes I know that's not how physics works don't at me hi and bye everyone um, it's been really fun playing Luca I look forward to playing Luca again unless fate intervenes in some form or another when we go back to season 3 and Wow, I just lost my train of thought entirely. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I can be found everywhere all over the internet as Changeling Ever. And you can find me playing tomorrow in Punching Nazis. I'm very excited to punch some Nazis. That is far right. Yeah. I don't think it's my turn, is it? Oh, it's my turn. Okay. I've got people nodding at me. Wow, you guys are on the ball. I've had too many beers. Cool. Um, so, yeah, I am J3Billion, otherwise known as John. Um, I have kids to go take care of, and uh, I also am going to be here tomorrow for Call of Cthulhu. Yes? No. Or is that Punching Nazis? Punching Nazis is Friday okay. night. I am a fan of Punching punching uh, anyone who instills anger and uh, vitriol into a society as to stir up uh, any sort of, uh, you know, uh, rebellions or and or violence. So, uh, yeah, let's go punch some Nazis. Yeah. I'm Kiyosama. You can find me on Twitter, at True Kiyosama. You can find me tomorrow in Call of Cthulhu, and you can find me on YouTube in a Vampire the Requiem Chronicle called Dust by Dawn on the esoterica channel go check it out it's great 
Hey folks, I'm JT. You can find me online at Zenselmancer. You can, and I will be a playing next on Saturday with uh, Technocracy. Yes, we will be. Some Agent Smith type characters. We will be bidding JT adieu to Thursdays. But don't despair because JT will appear in the new Saturday game when it starts. Are you in Sunday too? Yes. I'm in Sunday. He will be in Unknown Armies. So I'm dropping one game, but I'm adding two just on different days. Is that Grim Dark? Is that Grim Dark? Unknown Armies is a cult game, not a grim dark game. It's like it's like cult, but different. Okay. And that's everybody. And I I don't want to read this line because <laughs> But I'm gonna anyways. But I'm gonna anyway. And now for the writer die fans. Vote time. <laughs> so you guys have <laughs> made it to you guys have been whooping my ass <laughs> with all your stupid boons. <laughs> Bonuses. Votes make it. you level eight. Just kidding. Hey, look, natural 20 to walk away from a wraith who did was trying to kill us and yeah, or not. The kill spell just double damage on a 20 and I got a 20. Otherwise, it had been 5d6, not 10. Ridiculous. D8, sorry. Go ahead, do your votes. I'll sit here and brood. <laughs> what's the fi what's the end chapter vote worth? Oh, let's make it interesting. Twelve river bands. <laughs> yeah. A bottle of mutagen. We are we are gonna we are gonna break the system. Break it in half. Cut it down. Chop it down. Power to the people. For the next... So whatever you get tonight and whatever you get for the first session of Season 3, for every two votes you have, I will allow you to change one skill up to the next level of expertise. That's what happens if you get one vote. <laughs> or do you mean all the votes accumulated so far that never got used? You guys should have been using them. <laughs> They've right. not used a single vote. So what happens if somebody tonight only gets one vote? Well, hopefully you get one on the first session of Season 3. Oh, I see what you're doing. I thought you just meant tonight. I'm like, that's not going to work. No. So whatever you get tonight and the first session of Season 3. So what happens to JT's two. votes? Oh, uh, well, vote for me. How about that? <laughs> that's real easily. <laughs> Uh, well, I'm not the DM in his next game, so I can't. I'm the DM. Well, no, I'm the DM <laughs> in a month, but don't worry about me. Don't vote for me. We'll figure it out offline, I guess. If, if that, I don't know. Not, not important. Yeah, it's going to be. Well, no, you'll be. Are you going to be back for season three? I don't know. Depends on a lot of things. Mm, yeah, depends it's, on it's, schedules and right. stuff. And... It's unlikely. Um, vote nonetheless. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Oh yeah, we'll still vote. We're just JT saying, if we love don't you, bother, we'll tell you. Yeah. We just won't give you the vote. Yeah, uh, I'll vote for one of you. Don't, don't not vote for him because I'm gonna give mine to Knackles because you're gross and I love every second of it. Ah, uh, I'm gross. Also, I sick burned you real good, so you know you you deserve it. <laughs> You got a oh. vote from Tony, Dwayne, because you got your ass kicked. Did. <laughs> oh. I. I rolled. Right. I, I rolled like crap tonight. Like even even yeah, worse than I, I usually noticed. do. You got to punish them like Rachel does. I I'm gonna run out of dice here soon. <laughs> 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 so honorable mention definitely goes to Key. You are my favorite humor person, like in most of the games that we're in together. Like, eh. however, Tyler really saved our asses by using the silent spell on the woman who only does verbal spells. I have a feeling that we'd still be playing until one a.m. if he hadn't done that. That's <laughs> With Alice's vote, that's two. I will, in fact, bump a skill. Thank you all.
It's you, John, I think. Just trying to find my which mute button it was. Uh, big love going to JT uh, for just like the be the bears and the owls and like everything trying to fit in this like tiny space. Really and wanted Brad Brad Bradford to have heroism for that term, but <laughs> did he get that far? The last was was not to be. Um, yeah, that was that was awesome. I'm gonna give mine to ever um just or to luca uh just because i i love luca's character so posh so prim so i thought you so... gave it to jt i'm confused no he was just giving me props oh yeah okay, I, I just i'm giving him love man you gotta you gotta, you gotta give him those the last session right give, give out the loves and, and and honestly like tyler's going to sweep tonight because holy shit the fucking ending on that one god damn <laughs> um so I'm gonna give mine to Luca because, like, I love—I I just love the way Luca is. I just love the character. It's—it's it's great. Oh, and uh, key, key. I—I'm I, sorry. I did. Everyone else got to do you now. I fucking love <laughs> Knackle. Oh my god, the mouths opening up everywhere, and the different sounds like they make, and like you bringing the entire character to life, and just honestly grossing me the fuck out. It was great. <laughs> Not gonna lie. You, you've helped me with half my bits for this like whole season, so my vote goes to you for that, and then also that comment you made when uh, Casimir pushed you in to go talk to the lady in the attic. I don't remember what he said. What did he okay. say, Dejad Key? Ah, uh, oh, I can't remember exactly can't what it was. I just remember. I just it remember really it was funny. funny. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> like I, I know how Doctor Knackle feels now. Son of a it was bitch. like now I know how Luca feels. <laughs> or yeah, Luca feels. <laughs> and what about you, JT? Uh, I'm gonna also vote for Doctor Knackles because Doctor Knackles Ooh. is my favorite favorite character on the show. It is a plus one skill boost for you. Thank you. Bring something Thank to you. master. Yeah. I'm a master of medicine. Come here, let me replace no. your spleen. <laughs> Tyler's like, damn it. We have to deal with another useful. one of you. Oh, another, it's still uh, useful for him, but not for enough. that purpose. <laughs> we have to deal with a super mutant who thinks he's a doctor now. And oh, I, I love that character. <laughs> oh. All right. I think that's it. Well, awesome being awesome to each other, and hopefully all of all of you who watched today will rejoin us later on in the year for season three. Uh, I look forward to it, and I look forward to multiplying the number of uh, enemies that you will encounter. Although maybe I, I feel like you and I should sit down, and I can tell you how to defeat me, like for real, and over the summer. I think I'm going too easy. You that and you are. had all of your, all of your, uh, what you call it? All the bonus best friends and animal but companions. That's only going to get worse as we climb levels. I know. Well, not the animal <laughs> companions anymore, but mine will. Yeah, so I'm going to have to change my encounter levels up by four. Mm. Hell yeah. I've, I've only been oh, increasing yeah. them by two. Bring the pain. <laughs> if one of us doesn't die at some point, I will be sad. Oh, I'm going to kill if somebody. If another one of us doesn't die, you man. Okay. Yeah, that's already. You happened. guys don't need to die. I can die. It's fine. <laughs> I'll take it. Somebody's got to die. <laughs> As for the audience, we will not keep you here any longer as we ramble on about how I got my butt kicked. But we will leave the nightmarish miasma and step back into the real world. But until then, we will tell the mad poet that you said hi. Good night, everybody. Good night.